It's Friday night in Northwest Ohio. It must mean football. Welcome to High School Football on the Toledo Sports Network. I'm Rick. He's Dan. We got Larry down on the camera. We are in Kenton, Ohio, as the Eastwood Eagles take on the Kenton Wildcats in this first game of the 2024 season. Looking forward to some good ball. We are brought to you on the Toledo Sports Network by our good friends at Frobos Meat Locker. Ben Frobos, a big sponsor of us, a big friend, good friend of ours. Um, we need more brats. Who doesn't need more brats? How you doing, Dan? I'm doing good. And you? I am wonderful. Dan here is uh, with the Eastwood Sports Network. He does a pregame, postgame show for us. And I, I came up here, and I'm like, I'm going to be stuck by myself. Hey, Dan, you want to give me a hand? And we got Dan. And that's right. You know, that's what we're doing, just giving each other some help, just showing some love to everybody broadcasting, and especially football, a great thing to have. So that's why we're excited to announce Eastwood Sports Network is partnering up with Toledo Sports Network. Uh, so we're going to be giving some pre- and post-game coverage on Eastwood Sports Network. That will be on our YouTube page. Man, and then when it's, when it's go time, Toledo Sports Network is going to take it away, and we're going to be having some fun with that. It's going to be a good time for everybody. Uh, I was going to say, oh, we are having some technology issues, so I'm not going to be able to get a, keep a clock running. And we're going to be back and forth on the score. Should be able to keep the score up to date. Uh, just, you know, beginning of the season, getting the, getting the kinks worked out, getting the cobwebs cleared out, getting the... Uh, the electrons firing down the right pathways and we just didn't quite get it today or we had it and we just couldn't get it back <laughs> yep. well, we're definitely going to get it for next week and currently we're at a minute four and counting before kickoff the band bands Kent lining up the yep. wildcats just got into the stadium they took the long way down from the high school it looked like And the Wildcats take the field. For our youth cheerleaders, right before kickoff, grades K through 2 can come down to the field. Again, grades K through 2, mini cheer can go down to the field at this time. Eastwood's going to be kicking the ball off to start the game here. band will clear the field that is right <laughs> and it looks that eastwood we will be kicking it off and kenton will be receiving and so we will get ready to officially start a new year you're going to have number 17 mason Shaffy, the sophomore to bring this one out and ladies and gentlemen the wait is over let's start some football right here not too deep came to the up man there on the kickoff The East, Eastwood coaches down here are saying he fair caught the ball. So. Well, I mean, it, it, it kind of looked like he waved his hand, but well, I don't know. When you give the gesture, you give the gesture. I mean, yeah. That'll be up to our refs to decide. Could be right there. Currently looking yeah. at it. Looks like Brock Messinger, Daquan Oliver, Caden Donnell. They're going to spot it there. Some seniors right there on the line. Gael Mauricio, he was on the coach's show. You can get that every Wednesday at the Lucky Junction. Corbin Johnson back for the Wildcats. Four wide out, five wide outs. I think they're running a, a, a passing offense. Oh, false start on the left guard there. That's going to back them up on their first play. Not a, not a good way to start the season. We're all excited to get going, but you just, yeah. you got to wait until your QB says hut. And speaking of which, it looks like the Kenton offense here will be led by Corbin Johnston, the senior, 6'2", 210 pounds. Okay, 
Out into the flat. Eastwood read that one well. Beautiful block there by Woody. Colton Woodward, number six. Nobody was fooled on that play. Second and 15. Loss of five. Nobody, Johnson's been all alone in the backfield. And he got it going. Almost oh. intercepted. Woodward though again, to be able to get it right out of his hands right there. So that'll force a third down. 11.50 currently. Third and 15. Which with the way Kenton's setting up, they're gonna pass anyways. They're going to need, we talked about in the pregame show, that heavy defense is definitely going to be one of Eastwood's strong suits here. He's looking to go deep. Oh, receiver got open. Corbin Thompson's pass complete to Brady Cleman Beasley. Cleman Beasley, his top receiver, got that one for about 20 yards. Wildcat first down. I don't know if the Eastwood defender was reading it a little differently than where it was heading. Here we go now. Oh, another false start. Another false start. One snap flag on the play. False start against Kenton. Well, and you know, kind of stating the obvious here, but when you've got to try to run an offense here, you're going to have good passes like that, and that'll bail you out. But you got to be on sync for when you're going to snap the ball right there. Second one of the game already. Both uh, Johnston and uh, Beasley were uh, second team Western Buckeye Conference last year. Almost picked off. Brock Messinger got a Robert hold Johnson of it right there. Not quite complete. able to hold on, however. That's a name we're going to be saying a lot this year, I have a feeling. Oh, yeah. Both on offense and defense. That's the beauty about small school ball. You got the guys that will play both ways. Everybody in the town comes out for the games. And everybody comes out for the game, and everybody and they play both ways. And Yeah. Oh, yeah. Johnson. Sweeping out right. Just right gotta get, oh, just a little outside, as Bob Euchre would say. Yep, that's right. Woodward there to <laughs> hold him. Almost try to keep him out to there. Third and 15 again. Hopefully history doesn't repeat itself right now. Yeah, Beasley lining up on this side, near side. Lewis needs to stay on him this time. Oh. Corbin Johnson's pass completely along the sideline. That was Gorn Beasley again. Cleman Beasley. Steps out of bounds in Eagle territory. Cut Lewis with coverage. It's the second time. Basically, that same play. It's a fourth down. Yeah, exactly. You know, you're going to have to try to figure that one out. Fourth and two. He didn't get enough to get the first. And are they going to go for it? It looks like they will. So six feet separates Kenton from continuing it. Sneak. And are they short? Corbin Johnson with the keeper. It's all going to depend on the spot. Yeah, and it looks like. Kevin Lewis with the You tackle. might have to bring the chains out. Yeah. Or are they going to give it to him? They're Kenton giving it to him. Kenton Wildcat first They're going to give him that first down on the keeper. Yep. So currently Eastwood's been running three right on the line. Guy El Mauricio. Uh, Paul Lotzenheiser and Connor Norton, I believe. A little sweep out to the right side. And right there. Well read again. Pass complete to Maddox McFarland. So, yeah, Paul Lumberjack Lotzenheiser, Gael Mauricio, and Ethan Recker, actually, my mistake, running that three man often, or defensive line, excuse me, right there. Tap for a loss. Makes it second and 13. Roll Coming out to the right side there. again. Wide open. Nice one-handed catch. Corbin Johnston's pass complete to Brady uh, Cleveland Beasley. <laughs> Cleveland Beasley again. You know, his third catch of the day. You know, I might be a tad biased on who I want to win, but that was, I'll admit, a beautiful catch made right there. Nice one-handed snag. Got it in. Got feet down. Yep. Third and two, 958 and counting. And keeper Corbin gets Johnston the first down. Tripped up after gaining another Wildcat first down. 
Wildcats are starting to find a little bit of rhythm here. Oh, yeah. Currently mm. approaching the red zone towards their own band. Eastwood defense needs to pick it up a little bit. On the go. Going to try to find the middle. That'll be. Yep. That'll be Johnson to keep, to keep it. Tap it from behind by Gail Mauricio. Mauricio was there to just bring him down. Oh, yeah. It looked like Oberhouse was in on that, too. Oh, a gain of one. Second and nine. Yeah, if they're going to throw, f oh, we're going to see a running back for the first time. Johnson's got some help, and he hands it off to him. Alex Noble, the ball. Noble picking up about eight yards on that oh, second down play. down by a Cam junior, Shoemaker. A junior listed at 5'9". So he's got quite the speed. You already know looking at him. Four wide on the far side, and Johnson keeps it right up the middle. I'm starting to see a little bit of a pattern here in the Kenton offense. Braden Brown in on pass, the pass, get it, short run. <laughs> oh yeah, it's another Wildcat first down. 8:35 left here in this first quarter. Still no score. Kenton in the red zone. Johnston looking to this left side. Oh, Messenger with the stop right there. He, he heard Messenger's footsteps Messenger and got a little shaky hand there. Yeah, Messenger able to break it up without making it a defensive pass interference. So definitely a good move right there. Currently move it to second and 10, 8.29 now. Clock is stopped. Johnson all by himself in the backfield. Looking it over. Yeah, Corbin, yeah. He's swinging to the right side, nice. The tackle made Johnson, by Cam Shoemaker. Shoemaker kept the contain on that one very well. That's what you got to do. If you're going to be out there on an island, you got to keep that contained. You can't let them get by you. Absolutely. Now you got the clock running, which will help you out on kind of trying to get things moving. And a third and four. Third down, four to go. So now 12 feet separates to what could continue the drive or a plausible field goal depending what Kenton decides here. You got Cleman Beasley lining up in the slot on this side. He's breaking to the outside. They've got him for the touchdown. A lot of football game left though, and you know, it was bound to happen at some point. Now it's time to just wake up and get going. And then, you know, one of the three keys we had in the pregame show was these guys got to stay cool under pressure. Now you know Steven that, Pike okay, it's season, point. it's time to get going. To so now you just let them get this extra point here, and we'll see what happens after that. And it's good. Piper's kick up and good. 7.39 remaining in the first quarter. Your score, Kenton 7, Eastwood 0. Well, 7-0 for the first drive for Kenton. And we will be right back on the Toledo Sports Network. For the best meats around and the best price, get to Frobo's Meat Locker on Front Street in Pemberville. Frobo's family features homegrown meats, and they make a whole bunch of different kinds of items and they have over 200 different kinds of handmade items not to mention for Obos meat locker is definitely a bratwurst paradise they have over 125 different brands of bratwurst to choose from be sure to check them out on facebook or visit their website frobosmeatlocker.com now well, kenton took the opening kickoff had a couple of stutter steps uh, got it all straightened out and drove down and converted for a touchdown. Big man on that play was the big man all last season. Grady Cleman Beasley, and their senior wide receiver, just seemed to find a way to get open every time when they needed him to. Absolutely. And, you know, having these seniors, especially with Eastwood having 16 and then Kenton having theirs, that was the time you got to step up, and it's all or nothing now. But definitely a great opportunity. Third and 15, they were able to convert on a couple times. But now... The Eastwood Eagles will get the ball now for the first time. And I believe number 23, Stephen Piper, to kick it off. 
A little squib kick. Fair caught there by Eastwood. That was Raven Brown. Eagles take over first and ten. I don't know if that was a deliberate attempt at an onside kick or if their kicker just doesn't have a leg. I, well, I interesting. Trying to throw him off. I mean, you got to expect the unexpected in football. Yep. Especially the first week of the season, you never know. Well, here's Donnie now. Caden Donnell at quarterback here for the Eagles. We'll see Donnell with Oliver back on his right side. Oh, yeah. Three wide. Gives to Donnell right up the middle. The handoff. Picks up eight yards on that play. Great run there by Kevin Lewis. Now we keep, keep it moving. Gain of eight yards, second and two. Well, that was Lewis with the run. I thought it would have been Oliver, but Oliver must be out wide. Four wide outs to each side here, keeping Lewis in the backfield. Audible called right there. Another one of those seniors, 16 seniors on this Eastwood team. And Donald, well, Donald keeping, keeping it. Going to try to go up the middle. He gets the first down. He picks up about five on that one. Oh, yeah. Hey, Donald ball here. Tackle by Zane Snyder on the play. Snyder at midfield, two plays in already. Pass first down yardage. And the Eagles will be heading south towards their own band. Kenton going north towards theirs. It's now go time. Brock Messenger wide. Daquan Oliver right by Donnell. Oh. Uh oh. False start. Back on the play, indication on the field is a false start against Eastwood. It's going to back him up five, put him back first in 15. 6.41 left in this first quarter. Not yeah, the end of the world, but you don't want a lot of it. No, and it was happening to Kenton, too. It's that first game jitters. You know, you got to get, yep. get your adrenaline in check. Donald looking. He'll find an opening. The catch, Daquan Oliver, Oliver. to get it. And that'll be a first down Eagles and more. He'll get all the way to it. Looks like. Hey, Donald's pass complete. Looks like he picked up another 10. Five, he got about 25 over. yards on that play. play Beautiful one right up. there. Ended up about 36, 37. Yeah. That's pretty. I know. First and 10. Eagles. 32. Oh, yeah. Trevor. My eyes are off. Trevor. Yeah, that's all good. I'm that's not good. used to the. Oh, yeah. <laughs> got to get back into the swing of things here. Well, and he got out of bounds, too, so now the clock stopped. Gives you some more time. Donald with Lewis behind him. He's going to give it to Lewis off the left side. Nice gap there opened up for him. Kevin Lewis, the ball carrier. Big dogs on the offensive line making it happen. Lewis picked up about six on that. Well, now 5.50 and count. Seven. That was close. Yeah, second and three now. That opens you up to a lot of possibilities. Oh, for sure. Second and short, you can you can open the offense up if you want. Yeah. You know, wouldn't be surprised if Coach Cotterman does that. Yep. Find your advantages right here. Donnell to get it. He'll look now. Going to find a gap. He'll try to take it. Yeah, he's going to scramble. He's going to go on the <laughs> He's got side. Oliver leading the way, blocking. And he's going to get over. I'm not sure if he got out or not, folks. He got a first he, down. He got the first, down. yeah. I don't know if it's a stop for the first or if it's a stop because he got out of bounds. Yeah. And they'll run the yep. clock. He did not did get not. out of bounds. Here's the ball to the 11. First and 10 at the 11, just outside of that. So they can get another first down if they need to. Donald's got Lewis to his right side. Sends him out. Donald's taking it up the middle. Uh -oh. Gets about three on it. Caden Donald the ball carrier. Tackled by Junior Wright. So that's second and uh, how many yards he get? It looks like four or five from up here. Yeah, it looked like, yeah, he might have gotten four. So I'm thinking second and six. And you would yeah. be correct. 439 and counting now. Yeah, in the, first the eyes quarter. are getting back. Two in the backfield now for Donald. Cam Shoemaker to his right behind him. Number 22, Kevin Lewis. Lewis. Taken down in the backfield. He's going to lose a couple of yards there. 
He might have gotten back to the O-line. I don't know. Third. And, yeah, it looks like it'll just be stagnant. Third and six now. Beasley on that stop. Daquan Oliver to come in. And that will be, uh, that'll be Connor Norton, I believe, to come out at the number 33. Go time now. Hopefully you keep the drive alive. You don't have to bring out Austin Miller, the kicker, just yet. Shoemaker in motion. Another look to his right to Messenger. And it's oh, in, in and out of his hands. Pass intended for Brock Messenger falls incomplete. All right. I thought it was intercepted for a second. And yeah, he had it. Down. He got his hands on it, but he couldn't control it. Well, and Quinn, Quinn bring Ruffner it on. almost had the pick right there, and we'll bring out the kicking crew. And broadcaster's jinxes are real, so I'm not going to say anything about Miller here. Back up to senior Noah Har from last year, who graduated. It is the toughest position to play in high school football. Absolutely. And Austin's also a Austin soccer Miller player, so kick. we'll just see what happens. Rock message the holder. What's up? He got it. All righty. 7-3 ball game. 7-3 here at Catton. The Eagles down. 340 left in this first quarter, and we'll be right back. Join us at the historic Danny's Cafe, Rossford. We're always serving your favorite food and drinks seven days a week, starting at 11 a.m. Watch the best sports matchups on one of our 50 high-def TVs. Enjoy great live entertainment, trivia, karaoke, and family fun for all ages. Danny's Cafe, Rossford, is now serving breakfast Saturdays and Sundays from 11 a.m. to 1. Check out the Ford Social Club for your private event, 600 Dixie Highway in historic Rossford, across from Rossford High School. Mommy Bay Turf Center, a leader in synthetic sports surfaces as well as natural field construction, maintenance, and renovation. Mommy Bay Turf is part of Turf Nation, the most trusted source in the synthetic turf industry, including creating the surface for the biggest game in pro football. From professional, college, and high school sports to recreation and commercial projects, check them out at mommybayturfcenter.com and see our large collection of finished projects and services. Mommy Bay Turf Center, we build better. Set to receive the kick. We are back live at Robinson Field in Kenton, Ohio. Kenton Wildcats taking on the Eastwood Eagles. 7 3 to Wildcats on top. Mommy to Bay Turf Center, a leader in synthetic. Uh -oh. Let's try this. Now we get it going. Well, right there, 22 of Maddox McFarland. Tried to run it right off that kick right there. Why aren't we testing? Yeah, that's fine. So 335, 7 3 game as we figure things out. And there we we're go. back. Yippee. I clicked on the wrong. Gotta remember how this system works. Right. <laughs> well, I thought the same way. Oh my gosh. 7 3, 335 left in the first quarter. Oh yeah. Wildcats first and 10 on their 28 yard line. Johnston back. Right a little there. dump out. Oh, a little flea flicker there. And just short. Didn't well, quite have grasp of the green ball green when he threw it. Well, I, I tell you, Clemen Beasley, he's been kind of the Eastwood's Achilles heel, so to speak, so far into this game as we're 3.30 left in the first. And if he would have gotten a hold of that, it probably could be a 14-3 game. If he yeah, they, they, Eastwood really needs to find a, a solution for Beasley. He's he's been uh, well. He's down on this side. I don't know. It's a, and to run the ball. Wow. Corbin Johnston, the ball Johnston powers through. Picks up. Uh, down from behind by Kevin Lewis. A, picked up six on that. Six or seven on that play. We'll bring up a third and three. Third and two. Third and two. Third and two, you got Beasley down here on the near side in the slot. Yeah. 
Uh, I'm seeing wrong numbers. <laughs> it's one of those <laughs> days. Oh, my gosh. Oh, Johnson's going to keep it up the middle. Stuffed, but he might have still Corbin eked it Johnson, out. The ball carrier. He kept those legs a moving and see where they spot it. Well, that's what you got to do. Nearside officials getting a little ahead of himself here. They called it first. first down. All right, we got to move the sticks. And they're going to give him time to move the sticks. Johnson takes the snap, hands off. Up the middle again. Alex yep. Vogel, the ball carrier. 227 and counting now. I don't know if the Wildcats have seen something in that, that middle area there that they. Uh, Might start seeing some of those linebackers from Eastwood creeping up a little closer to that line. Oh. There you go, right there. A little pressure from the Eastwood defense. Well, Kenton was trying to set up the screen. Oh, and it's good of Johnston. He had that reaction time. You know, it was good of him that he was able to get that ball off quick. Because, I mean, sometimes if you let it get to you, you're sacked right there. Third and eight. Where's Clemens? Corbin Johnson's pass complete to Carson DeLong. Carson DeLong this time picking up uh, the first down. Into Eagle territory. It's a first down, Wildcats. Wildcats crossing into the Eagle territory again. Johnson by himself in the backfield. Four wide near side. Oh, and fumble. the ball's out, fumble. Ball is loose. It looks like, I think Eastwood got it, knock on wood. Or is it a complete pass? White I ball. think it is. It should be White's ball. And? And it is. And it is. Let's go, boys. Robert Johnson's pass complete to Maddox Hummel. Fumble on the play, recovered by Eastwood. I don't know who was in that scrum from Eastwood to get that, but that was good hustle on their part. Well, I saw number 62 in the Lumberjack Glatzenheiser right there. He was kind of just showing it. I don't think he came up with the ball, but now the fact that Donnie is going to be able to come out now and play some quarterback now. He'll have Andre Lewis, and he'll have Daquan Oliver to his right, and he'll have Kevin Lewis to his left. Oliver in motion. And that'll be an HB toss right there. Oh. He'll find a gap. Going to cut back. Oh, yeah. He might be gone. He's, gone. He's going. Oh. And he will get tackled there by number six and Zane Perkins, the junior. Anytime you can get Oliver open and moving, oh, it's, oh, yeah. it's just danger. He, he's one of the fastest guys I think I've ever met. Brought down by Zane and Perkins. When we were in middle school, he somehow convinced First a lot of people that he was Usain Bolt's son. <laughs> and I believe it. <laughs> he could have some Usain Bolt DNA in there. I don't know. He's fast, that's for sure. And there he goes crossing across. <laughs> Put him in motion, see if they opened him up there. Messenger alone on the right, a screen to Oh, Oliver. man. Or no, excuse me, Andre Lewis that got was that. Lewis. He, he, Donald threaded the needle he to get that, that to, yeah. to Lewis. Lewis. And then 46.8 seconds left. He got out of bounds right there, so now it's stopped. Ball's on the 16 yard. May not have been the, the wisest choice that Donald made, but he pulled it off. Oh, yeah. He threaded the needle on that screen. Six yards on that screen. It's second and four. Still outside the. They can still get another first down. I'll see. A scramble by Donnell. Probably just trying to get a first down. I think it was the keeper to get the first, I think. Set up by Humble. They're going to let the clock run. They're going to have enough time to, yeah, they got enough time that they can let it go. Yeah. Let's see if that's what they're going to do. 
Well, Drew Ludhart needs to come out on the field now for Eastwood. 18 counting now. 22 on the play clock, so yeah, I think you're right. They're just gonna let this one yep. fly out going to the second. Five, four, three, two, one. Well, at the end of one here on the Toledo Sports Network, it is Kenton 7, Eastwood 3. We will be right back after this message. The best meats around and the best price. Get to Frobo's Meat Locker on Front Street in Pemberville. Frobo's family features homegrown meats, and they make a whole bunch of different kinds of items. And they have over 200 different kinds of handmade items. Not to mention, Frobo's Meat Locker is definitely a bratwurst paradise. They have over 125 different brands of bratwurst to choose from. Be sure to check them out on Facebook or visit their website, frobosmeatlocker.com. Great food and great fun. The Keg in Greytown is now open and ready to make your night out fun and full of great surprises. Some of the best food in the area, all made by scratch with hand-cut fries, wings, chunks, papa's chili, and much, much more. Wood-fired pizza ovens, making some of the best pizzas in the area. Now don't worry, we have the toppings you want, and our dough is made fresh every day. The Keg, 1790 North Walker's. We are back on the Toledo Sports Network, Eastwood in, in Kenton, Ohio, at Robinson Field. Down at the time, 7-3 as we start this second quarter. I'm Rick, he's Dan, we got Larry on the camera. Very happy to bring you high school football here on Friday night. All thanks to our buddy Ben Frobos at Frobos Meat Locker, Frobos IGA. He pretty much owns the town of Pemberville, it seems like. <laughs> or he likes to think so sometimes. Who's that at quarterback? Oh, Drew Newhart's at quarterback now. Newhart. Go on the wide. Number 10 right there, Ludhart. Ludhart. He might get he there. Might, he, he will. He gets a push from the, the line, caught up with him and gave him a push. And you know what that means, folks. That's an Eastwood touchdown right there. Beautiful one. As now it's 9-7 Eastwood. Threw a little switcheroo in there by bringing Ludhart out to play QB. The 5-10 junior. For 5'11", Junior. Messenger kicking the field, kick the point. Oh, he's the holder. Yeah, that's right. Austin Miller will be kicking this one away. Number 34. Austin Miller on to attempt the extra point. Brock Messenger to hold. Extra points up and it's look good from me. Kick is up yep. and good. 11.52 remaining in the first half. Eastwood 10, Kenton 7. So, very quickly into the second quarter. It's Eastwood. Join us at historic Danny's Cafe, Rossford. We're always serving your favorite food and drinks seven days a week, starting at 11 a.m. Watch the best sports matchups on one of our 50 high-def TVs. Enjoy great live entertainment, trivia, karaoke, and family fun for all ages. Danny's Cafe, Rossford, is now serving breakfast Saturdays and Sundays from 11 a.m. to 1. Check out the Ford Social Club for your private event, 600 Dixie Highway in historic Rossford, across from Rossford High School. And we're back at Robinson Field. Quick score early in the second quarter there by Eastwood to give him a 10-7 lead. Well, that, that definitely shifted momentum for things right here. Mason Champion to get his set to kick off. Uh, Blaine Bush on Carson along deep to receive. Call me Champion that time. Yeah, they got it right all the times. <laughs> Split the, split the difference. Work with that exactly. <laughs> Maddox. Maddox. Maddox to get it. Oh, and uh, oh, a tackle. A tackle made. Maddox and McFarland involved or with the return. 
Maddox really McFarland, the freshman, he picked that one up and he got a little bit of movement with that one. Bluthart with the stop. So we're going to get first and 10 from the Kenton 31. Johnson's got five wideouts. Pulls one in for Vaughn. And going wide, not wide. Johnson's able passing to get that. Bushong falls incomplete. Bushong had two Eastwood receivers turn or defenders turned around on him there. Right. The better throw, it could have been uh, trouble there. Second and ten. Yeah, and I I think you definitely want to take an incomplete over an interception any day of the week. Five wide for Johnston. And hey. beautiful right there. Jason Young, the senior, Young able to get the tackle or the sack right there. Got the shoestrings from Johnston, brought him down behind the line. It's a four yard, four or five yard loss on that one. Good play from Johnston. Brings up third and 14. If I if if I'm on uh, if I'm on the man on Cleman Beasley, I am like giving him a couple steps. Oh yeah. Uh, and he just got behind. Somebody got behind him. Got behind Drew Ludhart. Ludhart, but Ludhart got his hand up. Right Perfect there. timing. Good timing from Ludhart. Oh exactly. That could have been trouble right there. Makes it fourth and 14. Johnson would have gotten the ball out a little quicker. Because Ludart got there relatively at the last minute, the last second. Right. Steven Piper, yeah. Steven Piper on to punt. Andre Lewis, Daquan Oliver, deep to receive. Oliver and Lewis back deep to take this punt. Standing at their 35 yard line. First punt of the game. Don't know, you never know what to expect, to expect from special teams play at this level. Oh, they're gonna get them with the delay of game. Delay a game against Kenton. <laughs> oh, a little, little witty repartee from the announcer for the stadium here. Oh, yeah. And a long High snap, over. but he gets the kick off. Yeah, exactly. Oliver, fair catches fair it catch at the 48. Oh, yeah. And Braden Brown of Eastwood right there, he almost got it. And a block punt would have been, right there would have been huge. Like I said, it's a, it's a, it's a crapshoot on what you're going to get with uh, special teams at the high school level, especially early on in the season. Oh, yeah. Even mm -hmm. at the college level, I mean, you remember the Michigan State, that team up north game, and that happened about, oh, my goodness, was that 10 years ago already? Probably. I, I've lost all sense of time. Man. I'm too old for this. <laughs> <laughs> We got 10:52. Eastwood ball up 10-7. Got Donald back, Lewis behind him. One of the Lewises, right? I think that's Kevin yeah, Lewis. Correct. Kevin Lewis to get it. He'll take the right side. Oh. Gonna try to get out, and the tackle Kevin made Lewis there. The Wildcats sealing off the edge the there. Yep. By Trenton, DeLong. Trenton DeLong to make the tackle right there. Lewis wasn't try quite Bushong able to play. right there with him. Oh yeah. Second and 13 now. 10, 30 and counting in the second quarter right here. 45 yard line for Eastwood. Got Andre Lewis and Oliver far side. Right. This guy's been on the last two drives. Messenger near side. Oliver in motion fakes the halfback toss. And a beautiful play there. Ludhart to get that two number two Shoemaker. in camp. Shoemaker. Shoemaker, Shoemaker down, down the far down the right side. side. He will he get gets there. there. 
Eastwood Eagles. Right there, a beautiful one. 16 to seven now, gonna try to make it a 10 point game. Offense bit on the halfback toss there. Oh yeah. Opened up that far side. Can't commit, over commit in any sport, especially football. Donald read it very well, got the ball there to Shoemaker. Shoemaker broke a tackle and then he was just off to the races. Austin Miller on to attempt the extra point. Rock Messenger to hold. Kick is up and good. Up and good. Nine minutes, 38 seconds remaining in the second quarter. Eastwood 17, Kenton 7. So we have 9.58 left, 17-7. Eastwood Eagles on top, and we will be right back. And we are back at Robinson Field, Kenton, Ohio. Eastwood Eagles taking on the Kenton Wildcats. 17-7 Eastwood on top. Just a little under 10 minutes left in this first half. Eastwood starting to get their, uh, get their uh, feet under them here with the, the offense, it seems like. Defense had a decent stop the last time around. Nice turnover. Gave uh, Donald the short field to work with. Yeah, Perkins and DeLong back deep for the Wildcats. And the kick. It rolls off the tongue more, you know? Right there, looks to be number 13. I'll take you to what? And Carson still Jones. Hall, still Hall of Fame average. Either way. <laughs> yeah. Or excuse me, that'll be number 17, Mason Chaffee. 13. And that it's, right there. Whoa, almost stepped out of bounds. He was close, but the, Carson with the, the official was right there to see. Colin Schenk right there to make Colin the flip Schenk. tackle, it looked like. So now we'll keep it moving. So they're going to get it on the uh, start at the 25-yard line, it looks like. First and 10 for the Wildcats. First and 10 for the Wildcat 25 yard line. Corbin Johnston back all alone. Five wide. He's looking to the far side, comes back. And right there. Oh, he overthrows Bushong. Bushong falls incomplete. Bushong found a little gap in the defense there, but Johnson couldn't quite get the ball to him. Well, and from what it looks like just off observation, this Kenton offense is very pass heavy, so you gotta kind of bring it back. And just yeah, but every now and then Johnson, like right oh, here, right <laughs> See? They, they mix it in a little bit. They don't have much of a running game outside of Johnston, but Yep. They'll they'll use him effectively. He'll keep, they'll keep the the defense honest. Yep. Kevin Lewis right there to make that tackle. Yeah, your your linebackers are going to have to keep their head on a swivel. And, and they're playing a three two D right now. And there's Johnson again. Good stop there from Connor Norton. Number 33. I don't even have that number on this roster. <laughs> Let's see if it's on this roster. That's the Kenton roster. Who wouldn't be on that roster? Oh, man. Oh, well. Sorry if that made it onto the microphones. Well, it's a good thing we're streaming and yeah, Mike can edit this before it goes on to Facebook. <laughs> well, I mean, 
Uh, we would like to thank our sponsor, uh, Ben Frobos at Frobos Meat Locker, Frobos IGA. Ben is a good friend of uh, the Toledo Sports Network, good friend of our uh, radio program every Saturday uh, morning, 8 to 10 on ESPN 100, the ticket. Although we're going to take this week off because Mike's out in uh, Archibald. We're down here in Kenton, and we're both going to get back late. So we didn't feel like getting up really early to do a radio show tomorrow. But usually Saturdays we are on 800, 8 to 10, 100.7 ESPN, the ticket. The sports show, that sucks. And if you <laughs> listened, you would know why. Well, <laughs> sometimes those are the best uh, sports shows out there, though, the ones that are just honest, a little bit of banter, like Pat McAfee and others. That's what people say. We're very uh, Pat McAfee-ish. Right. Although after what I've heard from their little get-together this morning on, over in Dublin, I don't know if we want to be compared to him. So fourth and four brings on the punt team. We got, is that Oliver back? Fair catch by Andre Lewis. That's Lewis. Stephen Piper's right. punt is fair caught by Andre Lewis. 17-7, your score. East was going to take over on there. what is it, 36, it looks like. So the Eagle offense starting to fire on all cylinders. Is that Luhart? Luhart going to take it to the snap. Hands off to Lewis. May have picked up a yard or two. Kevin Lewis, the ball here. Luthart staying in for another snap, it looks like. Tripped up after a short gain, second and nine. Uh oh. Um, trying to see over on the other side if something's up with Donald or just figuring they've got a, you know, a 10 point lead. And, Give number two some time. Wildcats getting some good penetration there. Able to knock down that screen. Third and nine, Ludhart staying out. Well, I mean, he's gonna be your quarterback next year no matter what, because you got Donnie, he's going to be graduated. Right, right. So might as well get him the reps now. That's what I'm thinking. It's you know they're up ten, second quarter. Yep. The throw, beautifully nice caught throw. by Andre Lewis. He'll find he daylight. At Three, four tackles there. Picks up a 15. Gives him a first down. On the other side of the 50. First and ten at the 48 Eagles. They had the first down, and then he got five more on his on the tackle breaking there. Little confusion there on Eastwood's sideline. It looked like. And Ludhart going to get a, try to get a run. He picked up uh, three first yards. Down, first down right there. He picked up two, three yards. Yeah. He'll get second and seven. Seven, ten left in the first half. Sounds good. I think it was 27. Set up near the line by Jaden Mustang. Oh, they're only going to give him a yard. That was a long yard. Oh, no. Yeah. Well, 6.49 and counting now. Ludhart to take it. He'll look right. Get a throw Comes and a back screen. To, the screen. to Kevin Lewis. He'll find daylight. And he will get the first got down the right first. there at the 35. He had, he had the first before he had a body in front of him. He, he got through there pretty much untouched. Well, and sometimes you're fortunate enough for that. And that was a well-drawn, well-executed play on the Eagles. Thank 
you. Boot heart. Right leg, right side bootleg. Caught by Oliver. Oliver. Is he going to give him the catch? And they will. Yep. So now first down, keep her moving. It's going to reset the chains. Keeps the clock moving. Bluthart's st staying out. He's going to have, who's that beside him there? Brown, Braden Brown. Oh, there's the halfback sweep. Right to Daquan Oliver to find the center. And he'll try to get it going right there. He picked up four or five there. Tackled by Matthew well, Handel. Just start chipping away at it now that you're getting into the red zone, so. Second the, and five. At the 22 now. Second and seven. They're only giving him three yards on that. Well. Three on like that place, a lot of work for three yards. Yeah. Shoemaker going to move. Ludhart going to try to oh. move. He'll be sacked. Drew Ludhart sacked by Brady Clayman Beasley. Clayman Beasley doing it on the defensive side this time. Taken down yeah, He's Ludhart for a five-yard loss at least. Acting as the Achilles heel right now. Third and seven, if I'm not mistaken. No, it's going to be like third and 12. Oh, no, third, third and 15. 15. Loss of eight on the play. Oh, wow. Third and 15. That hurts. Well. Kenton's gotten 15 on one play before in this situation twice in the last quarter, so I got confidence that these boys can do it. Ludhart now going to go. He'll find his options. He's going to cut right center. Caught right there around dead center by Colton Woodward. Pass number so six, that even Colton though Woodward. that'll be fourth down, you're kind of chipped yeah. at it. So you either go for it or Ball's bring out the kicker. They're going for it. It's All right. fourth down. Well, fourth and six. I don't see a kicker coming out. I don't yeah. see Messenger coming. Oh, Messenger's already out. Yeah, Austin Miller, he put his stuff away that he was using to practice with, but gonna, now he's not getting on the field. Unless they're going to take the clock down and call timeout and to bring him out. Well, I mean, I wouldn't blame you for doing they that. They could do that. You got some time you off got the clock. You got two left, and you got only 358, or 355, excuse me, and counting. Yeah, that's what they're going to do, I bet you. There comes the timeout call. Good play right there. So now I'll kind of recap things over and see what Coach Cotterman here decides to do. And with that, while they regroup, we will take a break and we'll be right back. For the best meats around and the best price, get to Frobo's Meat Locker on Front Street in Pemberville. Frobo's family features homegrown meats and they make a whole bunch of different kinds of items and they have over 200 different kinds of handmade items not to mention for Obos meat locker is definitely a bratwurst paradise they have over 125 different brands of bratwurst to choose from be sure to check them out on facebook or visit their website join us at the historic danny's cafe rossford we're always serving your favorite food and drinks seven days a week starting at 11 a.m watch the best sports matchups on one of our 50 high def tvs enjoy great live entertainment trivia karaoke and family fun for all ages danny's cafe rossford is now serving breakfast saturdays and sundays from 11 a.m to 1. check out the ford social club for your private event 600 dixie highway in historic rossford across from Fourth and six, and the Eagles are going for it. Six yards right here could change the world. Ludhart to fake. Make He'll go it. back to Brock He's Messenger. Messenger. Touchdown. He get his foot down. He got it. They're giving it to him. Touchdown, Eagles. Touchdown, Eastwood. Eagles right there. Brock Messenger with the good catch on the sideline of the end zone. Gets the catch, gets the foot down for the Eastwood touchdown. Oh, boy, that, that was a big one. Right there, I I didn't expect it personally. That's Messenger's second. Ludhart's got one too. And so now 3:40 left in the half. 23-7 favor of Eastwood. Austin Miller to kick. And it's good. It's good. Extra point is good. Three minutes and 40 seconds remaining in this first half. Eastwood 24, Kenton 7. I don't know. 
I apologize. I'm having clock and score issues, folks. I'm trying to get this updated here. Well, first game of the year, this is the time. Right. Once we're two, three games into it, we're going to be moving like a new clock, I tell you. <laughs> like a well-oiled machine. Yep. Ladies and gentlemen, we got those 50-50 tickets. Uh-oh. Tonight's winning number is worth $286. Uh -oh. Let's see what happens. 286 I could use that. Again, this is the Heidinger Insurance for 50-50. Winning number is... Four three seven. Well, already one, lost. Zero, four. Again, four, oh, three, well. Seven, one, yeah, zero, four. You, you can't win if you don't play. Yeah, that's true. And it usually goes to a good cause. It does. So I mean, that's that's why everybody yeah. does it. Supporting the band, supporting the athletic program, supporting the band, supporting the boosters, whoever it is, it's usually a good cause. These oh, 50-50s. Yeah. So 24-7, 340 left in the first half. Eastwood on top. Eastwood offense is uh, starting to click here. And now to kick that one away will be Shoffy going to be taken at right the there. 20. Gets up to the 30 yard line. Falls down near the 30 yard line. Kenton takes over first and 10. One more time on that 50 50 number. So the Wildcats ball first and 10 on the 30. Winning ticket to the apparel sales booth in the concession stand and collect your winnings. And thank you. At the halftime, you won't have to listen to us. Well, we'll keep the mic on, and uh, you can watch the band, listen to the bands. Both bands are going to be playing tonight. At least I think Eastwood's going to be playing. They're out warming up, so I would assume they're playing. I think it was a little, you know, they're getting new uniforms. They didn't get their uniforms back from the dry cleaners because they're in their summer uniforms from Eastwood. Yeah. You know, it's always a surprise with those guys. But <laughs> you never know what they could be doing. Uh oh. Roll nope. Mike. Mike. North gets the ball at the 42. An outstanding play right there for the Eagles. St. Perkins with the tackle. Huge turnover there. Kenton already down 17. Second one of the game for him. They had the fumble earlier and now an interception. You don't see me complaining. <laughs> Lutart still out at QB for the Eagles. Well, I think it's free. He'll keep going. He might beat him. He's he going to go. Does he stay in bounds? He does he does they gave him east one eagles touchdown right there unbelievable quick as that eastwood gets the turnover first play after the turnover and they're not throwing it long they're throwing it you know eight ten yards but the, the receivers are breaking the tackles and they're making it happen. Our offense has the speed, got to take advantage of it. Austin Miller Austin kick Miller now. Austin Miller the extra point. Brock Messenger to hold. He gets it. Extra point is good. Three minutes, nine seconds remaining. So with a little over three minutes left in this first half, Eastwood 31, Kenton seven. And we will be right back after this. Sports services, as well as natural field construction, maintenance, and renovation. Mommy Bay Turf is part of Turf Nation, the most trusted source in the synthetic turf industry, including creating the surface for the biggest game in pro football. From professional, college, and high school sports to recreation and commercial projects, check them out at mommybayturfcenter.com and see our large collection of finished projects and services. Mommy Bay Turf Center. We build better. Welcome back to the Toledo Sports Network coverage of high school football in Northwest Ohio featuring the Eastwood Eagles. Uh, Kenton taking on the Wildcats. 
31-7, Eastwood on top, a little over th three minutes left in the first half. Wow. I'm Rick, he's Dan, Larry's on camera. Getting our technical glitches going here, of course. Well, it'll be the first game of the season with all technical glitches. We got it. It's 18 yard line. Nice move, gets it outside. Gets it out to the 39. Zach Muholland right there to tackle. Could have saved a lot of trouble for Eastwood on that one. 3-0-1. McFarland with a good return. Picked up a, a 12, 15 yard return there. Yeah. Three minutes left in this first half. Let's see if Eastwood can keep up that strong defense. Johnston back all alone in the backfield. And Pulls it down. He finds a seam. Gets it closed up pretty quickly, but he picks up about four or five yards on that. So now, that'll bring us 248. And counting and remaining in the half. Johnston's a dangerous man. Oh, yeah. sure. Second and five. I mean, he's definitely been finding his openings to make something happen. Handoff. Alex Rogel, the ball carrier. Rogel breaks free, picks up oh, about 10 of his own there. Can Shoemaker the ball or with the tackle? Shoemaker it's stopped him. Middle of that Eastwood uh, offensive line or defensive line has been having some problems, it seems. But you're being spread out because they're running five wide outs. Go left. Johnston. Johnston the ball Cam here. Shoemaker right to catch him. Make him run Shoemaker out. ran him down the line. He still picked up about five yards on that. That's a, that's a good thing for him. And that'll stop the clock, too. Two minutes and 10 seconds. Four yard gain on the play. Second and Shoemaker did a good job of stringing him out. He still managed to pick up five. So we got second or four. Second and six. Johnston hands off. It's Rogel. Ma might have gotten the first. It's going to be close. First contact made by Braden Brown. Nothing fancy in the running game. They're just taking it right up the gut, it seems down like. About a yard to well, go. Just, that's sometimes the way to go is just. Johnston hands off to Ro Alex Rogel again. Picks up five, six that time. So that'll be a first down right there. Definitely enough to reset the chains. Well, can't yet to use a timeout. They still got three left. Minute 40 and counting. Right there, the handoff. Hand off to Rogel again. Alex Rogel the ball here. He might have turned. Keep running this ball. No video, it's cutting oh, in and out. We're back. Starting with this one. Uh oh, nope, I think we're uh, back. Okay. We are back. The video yeah, keeps cutting in and out. Of course, old. it's probably the camera. We have what? Steven it's always something. To kick it's not now. the cameraman, it's the technology in the camera. Left footed, up and ready. Right. Good. 31-14.
Ness kind of by the end of that drive surprised me, but also Kenton has yet to use a timeout, and I figured they would try to slow things down there, but no, just run heavy and get in the end zone. Yeah, they just took it to them. They found that, I think they think they found a, a, a weakness in the Eastwood defense. Mm -hmm. Running it up the middle, seems to you know, spread out everybody with your five wideouts, four or five wideouts, and then run it right up the gut. Yeah. Seems to have been doing some, uh, some damage there, and that's... I mean, the last half of that drive, that was all they did was hand the ball off to Rogel or Johnston was keeping it. And then that opened up the, the receiver for the long, for the play action. Yeah, exactly. And I'm, I'm sure that trend's going to continue. <laughs> so I didn't go to Kenton, I went to Ashland. <laughs> So now a 17-point game. What was it? 31-14, 102 left in this game. Or left in this half? This half. Gosh, thanks. Piper kicking. That will be correct. And who's back there for Eastwood? That looks to be Colton Woodward. Woodward's deep, deep. Yeah. You got the Lewis's shallow. With Saquon Oliver kind of as and the Oliver, second to yeah. last line. And it's up. Oh, oh no, it's a squib. Onside kick. They got it. They got the onside kick. Steven Hagler's kick is recovered by Jaden Mustang. Come on, man. The Wildcats take over first and ten. Wildcats aren't going to roll over and take it. They're going to try and make things happen, and they do it with the onside kick right there. Well, now you got three timeouts. Three timeouts, a little over seconds. a minute left. Yeah. Whew. So you got. They, they moved the ball well that last drive. You know, football is quite an interesting game because momentum should, can shift really fast, and we've definitely just seen that right now, I'd say. You got Johnston, the QB. Clement Beasley going out to the far side in the slot there. Well, so he's going to run it. He jucks out to the sideline. Watson Heiser will miss the Johnston sack. breaks the tackle. Looked he was trying to hit Hommel there. I think I was more, I'm going to throw it over in a safe area because if I don't, I'm going to get a hit. East, we got some good pressure on him there. The defense made that one happen. Here we go again, 56 seconds now. You got Cleman Beasley all by himself on that far side. On the left. Yep. Yeah. Johnston bootleg right. Finds a receiver in the middle of the seam, but incomplete. Bushong couldn't hold on to it. Third and 10. Wildcats. Well, Lindhart broke that up. Broke that up. He was able to get noticed right there. Real oh, we got a timeout on the left for the Wildcats. 50.3 seconds left in this first half. What do you think, Dan? How do you like it? You know, it's a great game. Great to be back in action, especially for a new sport like with ESN and having this partnership. So just kind of considering everything and how it's going through. You just you got to understand what your game's going through and how you guys have matured. And you, ought, you had that little bit of a dip right there when you let them get the seven. You got that great big uprise and that put you in the position you're in now. You got to keep that going. You can't let down now, especially heading into the second half. Right, exactly. That uh, onside kick. Caught the Eagles by surprise. Yeah, it caught uh, me by surprise. What about you? Yeah, yeah. I, I, the kicker had had some troubles earlier. I don't know if they were trying to do a sort of onside slash squib kind of kick earlier. Yeah, and then that one was definitely a full-blown onside kick. Oh, yeah. And well executed. And it caught, caught most of the Eastwood people by surprise. Mm -hmm. For sure. Third and ten, Wildcats. Johnston. He's got three near side. We've got some pressure coming in. Oh, a flag from that guy is going to be a holding. I guarantee it. Well, there's laundry right there thrown. Who's the flag on? 
It's going to be on. Uh, it's going to be on a uh, thirteen. Holding, yep, holding. Decline. They're going to do fourth and ten. Yep. And just, I kind of have a gut feeling here that they're going to try a fake. Fourth and ten from the from the midfield stripe. Well, Kenton's not going to give up that easily. Piper on to punt. Wow. Piper is going to. He's going back to punt. I, I Nobody see. back to receive for the. For the Eagles, they're they're not gonna. I sense a fake right here. I'm telling you. Oh, well, Piper kicks it. Did you win? Takes an Eastwood bounce Piper's though. Punt is down by oh. Comes back to the 35, so it'll be Eastwood's ball. 34 seconds left. First and 10 from their 35. Well, now just you got to decide. Do you try to risk it and keep it like you don't want to just end right now? Or do you just say, you know what, we're in a good spot. Let's just kneel the ball and try to avoid any yeah. risks here. You got Ludhart, Still the QB. Yep. Yeah, it looks like everybody's staying up close there. Nobody's going real far out. Oh, there Brock, we go. Brock yeah. Messenger, Daquan Oliver on. Over there, I believe that's Andre Lewis with Kevin Lewis next. Ludhart's looking. He's going to throw it deep. He's got. There. Maddox Hummel with the pick. Right. Ludhart trying to get it to Daquan Oliver. And Hummel stepped right in front of that pass. Turned it over. First and 10. Kenton with 27 seconds. That was not, that was not the time to go deep. Now, if you're no. with 14 and you're down 31-14, I totally get it. When you have a lead like this, I just I don't see it, and that's okay though, because I got faith in this defense right here that we're gonna make something happen. You know what? Yeah, Cleveland Beasley going left. He's in the slot on that far side. Big surprise there. Johnston, he's looking that way. He's got Beasley sitting no, down, no. but he comes. He drops the ball in the end zone. Great play there by Daquan Oliver to break it up. Carson DeLong broke it. Well, it's 31-21 if you don't break that up. That's got to be the input on that camera. Or the output. Got to be well, acting up. It's cutting in and out on us. Well, that's what halftime's for is... Getting back yeah, and and you may or may not see a lot of the band, but you'll hear them. Oh yeah. <laughs> nope. nope, out of bounds. Well, I mean, that's right. It stops the clock. It does. And that's 14. Kenton got third flat. and ten. Yeah, they're gonna be. I want to say they're gonna lean towards being on that sideline, but you can never. Huh. I just, they're going to have, they're going to Especially have when they've got Clement Beasley. It looks like he was set up in the slot. They're going deep. Nope, coming to the side. Didn't. Fourth and ten. With ten seconds. Outside. Now we'll see what happens. Great round and coverage. Brings up fourth and ten. A little far for a field goal, so you, I, what do you think? They've got to go for it. Whatever it is. Uh-oh. I, I can yep. see it involving Clement Beasley. Oh, me too. He's been, and if the Eagles don't put two on him, put one on him at the line to tie him up, put one back, and keep those two on him the whole time. Try to stone, yeah. And just, I mean, you got to figure out what you need to do here, and anything could happen. Just put or, or keep somebody back and have them spy easily. Yeah, that's an option too. You know, play your normal press with the regular with the receivers. Keep a couple backers in because the last thing you want is Johnston breaking one up up the middle. Right, and even if Kenton gets a first down right here, it's they're not, not going to have. It's not like they have all the time in the world. They're going to be very rushed and pressured. So, if you keep them out of scoring range and out of the end zone, I count that as a win going into half. No, 
Well, we'll see here. Johnston with it. He's got Beasley in the middle. Picked Inter off. Interception by Schumer. He'll keep going he to 30, the, uh, and he'll get stopped at the 35 as time expires. It's all right, Shoemaker with the interception to end the first half with your score, 31-14 Eastwood over Kenton. We'll be back right after, we'll run some messages, and then we'll be back right after the half. Postmeatlocker.com. For the best meats around and the best price, get to Frobo's Meat Locker on Front Street in Pemberville. Frobo's family features homegrown meats, and they make a whole bunch of different kinds of items. And they have over 200 different kinds of handmade items, not to mention Frobo's Meat Locker is definitely a bratwurst paradise. They have over 125 different brands of bratwurst to choose from. Be sure to check them out on Facebook or visit their website, frobosmeatlocker.com. High school. Join us at the historic Danny's Cafe, Rossford. We're always serving your favorite food and drinks seven days a week, starting at 11 a.m. Watch the best sports matchups on one of our 50 high-def TVs. Enjoy great live entertainment, trivia, karaoke, and family fun for all ages. Danny's Cafe, Rossford is now serving breakfast Saturdays and Sundays from 11 a.m. to 1. Check out the Ford Social Club for your private event, 600 Dixie Highway in historic Rossford, across from Rossford High School.
said, uh, oh, I don't know. He texted me, he says, you need to fix your receivers. Yeah. Doing the same also thing. known as <laughs> I was like, yeah. They wouldn't do a single thing because we have the best running back in the state. trying to tackle him low and he jumped I jumped over him. He didn't he knew he wasn't gonna get any more yards. So he just jumped up and it was pretty funny.
landscaping stuff until the spring, then I would say, all right, well, I've got the drift line. Best meats around and the best price. Get to Frobo's Meat Locker on Front Street in Pemberville. Frobo's family features homegrown meats and they make a whole bunch of different kinds of items. And they have over 200 different kinds of handmade items. Not to mention, Frobo's Meat Locker is definitely a bratwurst paradise. They have over 125 different brands of bratwurst to choose from. Be sure to check them out on Facebook or visit their website, frobosmeatlocker.com. Welcome back to High School Football on the Toledo Sports Network. We are live at Kenton, Ohio. If you're watching us on our live stream on ToledoSportsNetwork.com. Yeah, Eastwood 31, Kenton 14, getting ready to start this second half. I'd like to thank uh, Ben Frobos and the folks at Frobos Me Locker, Frobos IGA in Pemberville for sponsoring all the Eastwood games this year. He's made it possible for us to cover as many games as possible for the Eastwood faithful. And we are happy to do it and happy to have Ben on board. 
Uh, looking around the league, some of the other teams, they're not in league action yet, but the uh, other teams in the NBC. Yeah, uh, Lake down 22-14 against Lipsick. Uh, Fostoria is losing to Van Buren. Uh, the Otsego Knights are on top of Bowling Green Bobcats 27-7. Rossford on top of Northwood, 15-6. Uh, Woodmore is on top of North Central, 31 zip. Genoa leading Archbold, 14 to nothing. It's on our other station on the Toledo Sports Network. And Evergreen, 21 nothing over Elmwood. That covers most of the schools in the area. Uh, most of those are at either at the half or starting the third quarter, just as we are getting ready to start the third quarter here. In about 21 seconds, I'm Rick, he's Dan, Larry's on the camera. And we've got another uh, 24 minutes of high school football action on your first Friday of the 24th season. Gotta love it. Oh, yeah. I missed football. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and it looks, I mean, looks like Mike's got a good game going. 14 nothing at the half there. Genoa over the Archibald Blue Streaks, so... But don't go to that one. Stay here on Toledo Sports Stay Network. Here. Eastwood Games. First half was a lot of Eastwood offensively until that Kenton decided they uh, wanted to find themselves and came out with the, uh, the score and then turned around with the uh, onside kick. Oh, well, yeah, I get it. There at the end of the second half, or first half. Yeah, it was kind of just getting ahead of ourselves and figuring out like what exactly was going on and not real, I guess not really expecting it, so to speak, but knowing, you know what, we got this, let's keep working hard, it ain't over till it's over. And side note too, as part of our Eastwood Sports Network and Toledo Sports Network collaboration, right after the game, you will have post-game coverage live on Eastwood Sports Network on YouTube. That'll be Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Dan is in, he's, he is Eastwood Sports Network. Well, I, he has a lot of support, but he's the face. How's that? I really appreciate that. It, you know, it's a lot of hard work, but I love doing it. And it, it's definitely not a one man band, I'll tell no, you. No, that's, yeah. Oh, I agree. It's good, though. I, I, I enjoy having you here, and I think it's, it's a good chance for your, uh, we really, that's something that, that Mike has always stressed with all this stuff with Toledo Sports Network is, we're doing this for, for the, the students. We're doing this for the kids. You know, this, you, know, you got the, 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 the other network that shall not be named that just goes out and carries, you know, D1 games. And, you know, it seems like it, the, the schools out, you know, in the NBC are not getting their fair shake. And we want the students to be featured. They deserve to be featured, too. Oh, absolutely. I'm picking up what you're putting down on that one. And you know what? That's just life sometimes, you know, and I feel like this is more laid back for the people. And, you know, it does make the uh, atmosphere feel a lot more professional, I'll tell you. And, and we enjoy being able to bring high school football. Uh, then, Genoa Bank helps us out a lot. Uh, ben Frobos with Frobos Meat Locker helps us out. Brad Morrison over at Danny's uh, Cafe. Yeah. Um, they've got a good breakfast going there at Danny's now. Uh, oh, for sure. That's... We get a lot of support from a lot of friends that, that, that appreciate what we do with Toledo Sports Network. And we're just doing it for the, for the, for the kids. For the it's kids. For, I you like know, it. It's cliche, but it's for the And I hate calling them kids because they're not. They're you know, young adults. You know, but that's what we're doing it for. We're doing it for them, giving them a chance to be featured, getting, getting their faces out, getting their skills you so out. You know, you never know. You know, starting out, you know, as a young freshman, you always loved it. I mean, I may rest in peace, Jim Weber. I'd listen to his games oh, for right. hours when I was just a little kid playing ball in the yard and then, you know, loving the side of sport. And then one of my first right professional radio gigs, I worked at a station that was called WHFD. Mm -hmm. And that was, they were the Mud Hen station really? at the time. This was back <laughs> a long time ago. <laughs> a long time ago. <laughs> Their station is in Archbold. Really? And you know, Mike's probably sitting right next to their guys right now. But part of my job, they sent me to Mudhen Stadium to put an antenna up on the roof so that the Mudhens could pick up the signal of the station and broadcast it in the stadium. Really? So I got to hang out with Jim and, oh, and uh, Frank. We awesome. got to know them pretty well, hanging out in the Diamond Club. And, yeah, rest in peace, Jim. Jim Weber was a legend. Absolutely. And, you know, the games will go on, but they won't be the same. 
Oh, uh, exactly. And now this game will go on as well. Eastwood to get the ball right here. It looks to be Andre Lewis and Daquan Oliver back. See, I Short think fall hit there. Fair caught by He's Sawyer Mason. He was on the coach's show just on Wednesday. He did an excellent job. He's doing, I don't know if they're doing that short kick on purpose. I don't well, recall him ever kicking one very deep. Throw him off, and you know that Andre and Daquan, they got the speed, so just kind of trying to, you know, bring your options open and figure out what you should be doing, and, you know, just like that. And now we'll see what keeps going on. It looks that they'll keep Drew Ludhart at the quarterback position, which I did not see that coming into this game, that it would happen. I figured they'd save him for uh, that school south of six, but we'll keep him going now here. <laughs> Low ball to Kevin Lewis. Ooh. Not what we wanted, but it's okay. It'll be okay. It wasn't a turnover. That's right. That could have easily been a turnover, the way that snap came back and, no. and, and the exchange to Lewis. Well, you got to have a concrete grip on it when that happens. And Tight. you lose two yards right there on your first play the, of the half, but two I mean, you're going to have a lot more to go. Well. So keep the train rolling here. Second and 12, Ludhart back. He's got four wide outs. He's looking down uh -oh. to the left. He's got Oliver. Oliver catches. Steps out bounds. He got a couple of, they picked up what they lost plus a couple there. So that'll be third and, I'm gonna say about third and eight. Yeah, third and eight. I'm thinking the same thing. Call it a gain of four, it's third and eight. Yeah, we were right. Getting there, getting warmed up. Yeah, we're getting, getting back up. into That's the, right. <laughs> we're getting back into it here. Yeah. Well, Brock Messinger. And Cam Shoemaker to Ludhart's right. Oliver by himself on the left. Kevin Lewis right by Drew Ludhart. Oh, low snap. Not good. Ludhart, Ludhart gets Ludhart. it up, gets it out. Oh. Hit right there a little late, and that's not good. He's up. He's okay. Yeah. I, I don't know who the receiver was out there, but he wasn't ready Ludhart to be a receiver. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, you you got to have your head on a swivel and be it's ready for anything. Ludhart, Ludhart was lucky to escape, and he got the ball away, so they didn't take a loss, but it brings up fourth and eight. So we we'll should see the punter for bring the first up the punt time. Team. Oh, no. Actually, yep, we're yeah. going to punt this. Drew Ludhart, jack of all trades to punt it. Drew Ludhart punt formation. He was a very busy man last year, too, sometimes. Oh, yeah. You know, he's a great guy to hang out with in study hall. He's good just to have a conversation with. A part of the highest viewed interview on ESN, so that's nice. cool too. Far catch right there. Humble calls for the fair catch near the 38 yard All right, line. so a little over 11 minutes left in this third quarter. 31 14, Eastwood on top. We'll be right back. Join us at historic Danny's Cafe, Rossford. We're always serving your favorite food and drinks seven days a week, starting at 11 a.m. Watch the best sports matchups on one of our 50 high def TVs. Enjoy great live entertainment, trivia, karaoke, and family fun for all ages. Danny's Cafe Rossford is now serving breakfast Saturdays and Sundays from 11 a.m. to 1. Check out the Ford Social Club for your private event. 600 Dixie Highway in historic Rossford, across from Rossford High School. Uh-oh. A fumble? Oh. Yeah, I think he fell down on it, though. Yeah. They're gonna got six yards on that carry. Second and four, counting. They're gonna do it. Hand off that Rogan. You had you had Alex Braden Rogan. Brown to kind of slow him down a little bit there, but so once you got a couple other Eagles right there to kind of have a See, team they're, effort. They're, they're playing that game. They're they're gonna lull you into clogging that middle and then they'll go out wide again. Well, yep. The coordinators right next to us. You can coordinators are calling for play action. Oh yeah. And I wish we could be next to the coordinators every game. Oh, this is great. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I, one time, because I used to or I'll tell you later. And anyways, you got 
Corbin no play Justin. action, but he's got to throw Daquan oh. Oliver to hold on to him right there and be able to break it up. Zane Perkins not quite able to get that. A little overthrew him just a little bit there. He couldn't quite get to it. Yeah. Oliver with good coverage. And then circling back, I just got to get this in. I used to go to St. John's, and when I interned there, I remember there was this one game we had, and I don't remember who it was, but something happened. You could hear the coordinators just slamming stuff in the other room. <laughs> Anyways, a run there. Hand off to Rogel, up the middle. He's going to get three. It's going to make it wrapped up by Connor Norton. Third and seven. Oh, great play there by Norty. Connor Norton, baseball player and great guy to be around. So third and eight, 9.47 and counting. Ball's dead center on the 50-yard line. So now I'll just keep moving along here and see what happens. Johnson trying to get something to pull back, change plays, it looks like. Mm -hmm. He's got five wide, nobody with him in the backfield. They're, they're bringing his far side people in a little bit closer. Well, and, uh oh. And then on a side note, I don't know if the rules are different for high school, but each team has one time, well, one time out left, it says on the score clock. Do they reset them? Into I'm the pretty sure half? they forgot to reset them after. Well, I, I don't know. I think they're having some issues. They're having some technology issues just like us. Aren't we all? Because yeah. <laughs> that one timeout's been up there since the uh, first half. Yes. One lonely timeout on the Eastern side. I'm pretty sure you get three per half. Yeah, I think that's for every level. All the way up to the NFL. All right, you're going to have Gael Mauricio, uh, number 65, Ethan Recker. And then I believe number 58, that'll be Logan Brown. On the defensive line side now, third and eight. So Johnston to look. Johnson. He's going to try to make a throw. Oliver not quite able to get there in time. They get it to him. They get his feet down inbounds. They will say he did. DeLong. Well, we haven't heard that name in a long time. It's cool to see him again. So now it'll be a first and 10 on the 40, a 10-yard gain right there, 9-15 flat. Hand off to Rogel up the middle. So I think he got three yards right there, so that should be a second and seven. I think I'm gonna give him three or four there. Yeah. Yep, second and seven. Look to be going for zone now for the Eagles. Hand off to Rogel up the middle. Alex Rogel ball here. Tackled by Cam Shoemaker. Shoemaker and uh, is that Lewis? No, 24. 24 for us? Yeah, Braden Brown. Braden Brown, that's correct. Put down four to go. Here we go again. Johnston to go. Right, an audible call. Me, I'm always looking for. Uh, By head coach Zach Turner right there. Cleman Beasley. I'm always looking his oh, way. Yeah. He's been Eastwood's Achilles heel so far. We'll see what he does now. They're playing him tight. Fake handoff, read option. Johnston. Gonna run over the right side. He'll get the first down right there and some extra. Yeah, that'll reset the chains. Oh yeah. Keeps the clock running, though. Eastwood likes that. Oh, yeah. They don't like the first down, but they like the clock running. Well, and I mean, you never want to give up points, but you're up two touchdowns and then a field goal. So you got a little bit of room, but, I mean, still, you don't want to waste that room, you know? Johnson fakes to Rogel. He's, He's gonna looking. He's looking. He'll trip right there, just the receiver. So His receiver fell down on the turn. Johnston to, Johnston with the not the best time to fall down, but you know what? Still a scramble and still some yards off of it, so not completely lost. Yeah, Maddox Hommel turned to try to make try to cut back in and just lost his footing. Well, and, and that forced Johnston to pull it down and try to get something out of the scramble there. And, and he not, did. Yeah, I'm not an expert on the field, but it seemed a little longer. It's, I don't know if that did anything, but it's that time of the year where the 
the condensation from the humidity is yeah. going to get on that grass and get you a little slick sometimes. Tomorrow, Saturday, you can mow the oh. lawn, and that will be a dropped pass by Zane Perkins, the junior. He had a few yards ahead of him. I don't know if he got a little ahead of himself. Yeah. I mean, the, pla the pass was a little low, but he should have been able to scoop that up. Mm -hmm. no. Third down and three. Third and three on the 21. There's Vogel. Vogel breaks it, and he gets into the touchdown. Alex Rogel with the 22-yard touchdown scamper for the Wildcats. Takes this to 31-20 with the point after coming. Well, That middle, they've been running up that middle consistently with and getting... Most of the time, they've been getting yeah. some good results. Find what works for you, and obviously, head coach Cotterman, he's going to be looking at this and film and everything like that uh, for next week, and now we'll see the kick here. It's up. up. It's good. It's good. A 10-point game now, and the Eagles are going to need some action from number 10, Drew Ludhart, the junior. Right. And so 6.56 on the clock in the third quarter. 31-21 Eastwood on top. We'll be right back on the Toledo Sports Network. Great food and great fun. The Keg in Great Town is now open and ready to make your night out fun and full of great surprises. Some of the best food in the area, all made by scratch with hand-cut fries, wings, chunks, Papa's chili, and much, much more. Wood-fired pizza ovens, making some of the best pizzas in the area. Now don't worry, we have the toppings you want, and our dough is made fresh every day. The Keg, 1790 North Walker's. And we're back at Robinson Field in Kenton, Ohio. Kenton High School. Kenton driving that ball down almost the full length of the field. As full as we're going to get with high school football. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, at least it's this level. 31-21, Eastwood still on top. Andre Lewis, take one all over to receive. Yep, and then you got Colton Woodward and Sawyer Mason with uh, number 14 right there and Bryce Coger. They're going to be the second line right there because, you know, Kenton's been not getting the ball quite all the way there kind of as a trick, so we'll see if one of those three has to run it. Oh, Lewis will pick it up. He's going to try to run it. Go on the left side. He's going to be right around the 34, and he gets a swarm he of gets red jerseys. He gets dang tackled the there. Wrapped up by a host of Wildcats. And Madison Farland with the initial contact. And so now the Eagles will be able to bring the offense out, and we'll see what happens. From the 34, first and 10 for the Eagles, 31-21, 6.49 in this third quarter. Lutard's still out. Lutard, he's got Lewis on his side. Oh, oh, Kevin Lewis Kevin still Lewis makes something out of it. Bounced off of it, the breaks side. it outside. He's he going to have daylight. Oh. Going to be caught. No, he'll break the tackle. Gets but forced out of bounds. Out of bounds. Maddox Hamel to make contact, forcing him out. A beautiful run right there. Ooh, we Looking. got a couple of bodies down. Uh-oh. Yeah, with the way they're acting, it's cramps. That's the one thing you're going to find also early on in the season. It's warm out, and they're not hydrating properly. Well, so you're going to get those cramps. Well, you got to be careful. Drink up on water. but And you know what? You know what's an odd remedy, though, for cramps? Hmm. Pickle juice. Pickle juice, yeah, because it's the sodium content. Really? Yeah, it's... Yep. Uh, yeah, that's definitely what it is. You got two trainers out there oh. working those. Oh, jeez. <laughs> well, you got... You got one guy with both legs cramping up, and the other trainer's working on the left leg. Yep. Tony R head athletic trainer there. I can't quite recognize from here the other one, but get these guys moving and we should be okay. You know, though, props out to the Eastwood students who drove all the way down here for this game. 
That that is some devotion. Oh yeah. And there is a good crowd from Eastwood. Yeah. It's. At Seago blowing out Bowling Green 41 7 into the fourth quarter. Really? You know, when I hear those, I know Bowling Green was kind of supposed to be on a redemption arc this year. And at Seago to show that NBC power, though, that's quite something. At Seago's got a decent team this year. They could they could do something. Huh? It's I, I really think and it's going to. Even though sometimes we get for, referred to as the Genoa Broadcasting Network, I think it's a three-horse race between Eastwood, Oak Harbor, and Otsego. I see that definitely too. And mm. you're going to have the two O's and the E. And I feel like Eastwood got off to a pretty decent start, kind of slumped a little bit in the year. But and then I believe they won their first playoff game. And then I mean Liberty Center's Liberty Center, but he's got to so. keep moving. I mean, Eastwood at the end of the season, they've got a bear of a schedule at the end of the season. Oh, at Seago, at Oak Harbor, and then Genoa. Oh, dear. Back to back to back. Oh, boy. Well, we'll be there. Oh. Yes, we will. Oh, Ludhart going to try to use his legs after uh, the cramp. Not quite. Ludhart with the keeper. Taken down. Junior Wright. Junior Wright. Well. I know. I was, I was like... So now second and 12 on the 47. Just forget it happened to keep it moving. You gotta stay cool here under the pressure. 620 and counting in the third. Ludhart looking near side. Screen set up for Lewis. Kevin Lewis there. He caught the ball, but a sea of red jerseys. Right they were there. right there. Oh, yeah. As soon as he turned, they were there. He bounced off, got a, got a yard or two after that, but that was red pretty well. well red even, even better by the coaching staff up here in the booth. Well, gained five <laughs> yards on that one, so now you got to try to get seven on this. Third and seven. It's a little far to bring the leg out if you are stuck in a fourth down situation, but. I think up 17, they probably, or I'm sorry, they're up 10. Yeah. How where quickly did, I forget that last Where did the lead go? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it happened Ludhart so to quick. to roll left and roll. Oh. Caught successfully by Andre Lewis. Going to truck a guy right there. And then Lewis, Lewis faked him out that he was going deep and he followed right along yeah. and just stopped. Oh. Stopped on a dime, turned, and there it is. We got another cramp on the field. Oh, boy. And that, I believe, I can't quite see from here, but, I mean, bringing on it, especially with kids like Daquan and Andre, the way they're able to use their swift feet, I mean, that's definitely, you can tell they've run track in the spring, and that's just helping them out, I think. Yeah, the Kenton defender gave... Gave Lewis lots of respect, and it was almost too much because Lewis just put on the brakes, turned, and the ball was right there. Well, mm. it's just. It's definitely a heat cramp. And you're going to see that as the game goes on more and more, it's going to be. Absolutely, and I mean, especially when you're at these levels you know you're not nearly as like at the NFL level or anything big like that you're not I mean we're high school kids I'll admit that we kind of sneak in a slice of pizza here and there but I mean just got to kind of lock it back in and know that this stuff's going to happen just drink the water heavy and keep it going yep since we got a little time here I'm going to thank uh, Ben Frobos at Frobos Meat Locker Frobos IGA his sponsorship means the world to us. Uh, we wouldn't be able to do this if it wasn't for uh, Ben. And also our friends at Genoa Bank and Brad Morrison and Danny's Cafe, downtown Rossford. Uh, we, rumor is there may or may not be a some sort of coaches show. I don't know. Oh. It uh, could be happening. We don't know. 
I keep getting told to be available on certain nights of the week, and I'm like, yeah. okay, Mike, whatever. Right. Well, I mean, <laughs> if, if you're interested in helping sponsor some of these games, give Mike Jamison a call at 419-514-1302, and he can hook you up with some sponsorship packages here on the Toledo Sports Network. Yeah. And then... Also on the Talks of a Coach's Show, Eastwood Sports Network, live at the Lucky Junction, 7 p.m. on Wednesdays. We're going to have a pretty awesome cast, I'd hope, on that day. We'd love to see you there. We had our first one. And that's on Wednesday. your YouTube Live, the Eastwood Sports that's Network correct. YouTube yeah. Live? Yep, that is correct. And, of course, this game will be on the Toledo Sports Network YouTube after uh, yep. it gets uploaded. Oh, DeLong, I think it was. Oh, it's Ty Coombs came off the edge, got got Ludhart. Well, threw him for at least a five yard loss. He's got that toughness now getting back up and knowing that, you know what, that play was not what I wanted, but it's the cards I was dealt. Let's keep going. So now second and 17, 422 and counting. Ooh, seven yard loss. Oh boy. That hurts. It's okay, though. Oliver in motion. Looking the other way. Almost got the Ludhart again, but he got it away. Yeah. Picked up the law. Oh, no, they still haven't picked up all the loss from the sack. It's going to bring up third and probably 12. Uh, third and 12. That'll be affirmative, I believe. I yep. called it before their spotter did. I just want you to know. <laughs> It's just <laughs> that eagle vision just. It's zoning in here. Yeah. yeah. Well, just so you got. Ludhart with Lewis in the backfield. Lewis and Oliver. Oh, fumble. The mishandle on the snap. Everybody, of course, is saying they've got the ball. Well. I have not seen an indication from a official yet. There it is. It is a turnover. Ketton Wildcats ball. Ludhart mishandled the snap and it fell forward right into the midst of the line and there was a rugby scrum going there. Well, you know what? This is, this is gonna revert back to the three keys I had to game the third one was stay cool under pressure. Eastwood is getting rattled right now, and I know that's just is what it is when you're playing this game, but you gotta stay cool under the pressure and know that, you know what? Mistakes are gonna happen, but you gotta bounce right back. Yeah, you that, gotta bounce back now. That last series of downs was a sack, a pressure, and a fumble. Mm -hmm. yeah. Run on the right side. Oh, he breaks it. Daylight. He gets ran down. Messenger and the Shoemaker ran him down, got him out of bounds. Well, the bad thing about with small school football is you've got the guy you need to be able to talk to and calm down on the sideline out playing safety. Yeah. And so Alex, well, and that is kind of how it's going to have to happen, but also it's a good thing. Because now Ludhart's yeah, like he doesn't have to, he can't he doesn't have a chance to think about what like, the previous series true yeah it's like you know what you got to keep and that's it's got to be a goldfish oh yeah as Ted Lasso <laughs> like to say well and, and be hockey, a goldfish yeah in hockey when you got to go back to the bench you know you got a time to stew over it but football you just you got to keep it going and gonna Johnson try to back. go long on that he'll break out to his left he'll just side to scramble it down. there. He might have gotten the first. Right. It's going to be close. He, looks, on the he spot. looks short. But I could be wrong here. And another yep. cramp. Uh-oh. That'll be Gael Mauricio. Well, some sportsmanship there shown by Carson DeLong. Mm -hmm. To help him out just a little bit. Yep, they're calling it third. Well, Fourth, uh, third and one. Well, And it's really not even that hot today. It, what is well, it? I think it's more of a body readjustment. Yeah, you're working 
really hard practically every day in the off season and even now more than ever when you're getting back into the swing of things. But now that you're in an actual game situation, there's fans in the stands, there's this, there's that. It's like your body needs some readjusting and you guys got to get back on pace with each other. Yeah. And that's, that's just how it works. 68 degrees here in Kenton right now. Really? Do you know the wind by chance? or? Let's see if, if AccuWeather will tell us here. Feels like a light breeze, but... There is a little bit of a breeze. And two miles an hour two out of the north. So not too overwhelming, but Going also... Going left to right for us. A little, just a little light breeze. Yeah. And you know what? You will never hear me complain about a breeze. <laughs> not at all. Mm. Fostoria is still getting shut out by Van Buren. What's the score of that one? 30 to zip. Oh, dear. Lake closing it up with uh, Lipsick. 22-20. Lipsick still on top. Well. Last mm. All righty. 239, third and one on the 44 now. We'll see the Kenton offense once more. I'm predicting Rogel up the middle. Well, got nope, to nope. For I'm sorry, nope. brought Johnson up the middle. As soon as he broke out. And <laughs> that doesn't take. Pushes ahead to the 40 yard line, first down Wildcats. It doesn't have to be John Madden to see that one coming. Oh yeah. Well, but the minute you overplay it, he'll read it and pull back and throw it. Uh, Johnston hands off. Rogel um, breaks it for a few extra yards. Rogel the ball carrier. He gets up. Uh, he got about eight or nine on that one. Well, and I'm not, you know, I'll admit I'm not the best knowledge in football, but it looks like, oh, they're going hurry up. I was going to suggest a timeout, but they run oh. hurry up. Handoff they right threw, there. Yep, they got the flag. Too many men on the field. And a little bit of a flag's going to be 12 men on the field. By eight. Well, it could also be unnecessary roughness. Hommel and Oliver are kind of going at it a little bit, chirping. Down low here, yeah. But that is it. Too, now is it 12 men on Eastwood or Kenton? East. Because only has 12 men on the field against yeah. Eastwood. They declined. First down, Wildcats. Third time it's happened today. First time we've gotten caught. Wildcats take, deny the penalty and take the uh, results of the play. Well, First could, and 10 on the 27. Who could blame him? It was a good play. All righty. The Eagles are not handling pressure well right now. Well, 155 and counting. Ball on the 27. Rogel. First and 10. Oh, he breaks the. That was a fake. Johnston fakes me out. Uh oh. Flag comes in late. Could be celebration. There's laundry. There's laundry. It's down in the end zone, though, so it's probably after the score. I hope it's during the play, but. I'm thinking it was after the play. I think there might, I saw a little bit of extracurricular activity down there. Well. You can see what the. You got to act like you've been there before, but it looks like uh, head coach Zach Turner going to talk about it. And another piece of laundry thrown to be determined what it is, but. Uh, Could be the coach coming out multiple flags three quarters of the way onto the I field. Mean, from what I've seen, though, with other coaches, that that was barely anything. I mean, a couple words were said. I mean, yeah, but they yeah. they might. And it, I don't know. I didn't see the briefings for this year for officials. They might have been given a point of emphasis oh, yeah, to keep coaches on the sideline, keep well, them in their zones. Well, you gotta, I don't know. Don't even let it start, and then it's not an issue. I see that. So they're going to get get the uh, officials going to each sideline. So this is probably their warning, and then they're going to start laying the hammer down more heavily, I suppose. I but. Call offsetting. I could see offsetting unsportsmanlike. Well, who knows? It's been, especially in this third quarter when it's more competitive, they're starting to get a little more chippy. 
And even though you wouldn't really consider this like a high level rivalry game, I mean, tensions can still flare and there still can be issues had. And there's a minute and 47 left in this third quarter. And on sportsmanlike on Kenton. On sportsmanlike on two on Kenton. Oh, okay. On the sideline. So we got unsportsmanlike on Kenton and unsportsmanlike on the sideline. So that'll kick them. That'll so that'll affect the kick. Is that right? I don't know if it affects the after point kick or if it affects the both. Well, after point the point after and the kickoff, but they're definitely pushing the point after back. Well, I believe on Sportsman likes what is that a five yard? Because two and then five, that knock them back ten, which can make a noticeable difference when you're in going for the extra point. Yep. It's no longer a chip shot. All righty. And like I said, at this level, with special teams, is there really such a thing as a chip shot? Oh yeah. <laughs> Stephen Piper, the six foot flat senior, to kick it now. So he's going to step back. Making the kick from the 10 yard line. Or that's where the holder is, excuse me. Ball snapped. Low snap. Kick. Gets is it up. Good. It's a three point game, folks. 31 28, 147 left in the third quarter. We will be right back. Yep. For the best meats around and the best price, get to Frobo's Meat Locker on Front Street in Pemberville. Frobo's family features homegrown meats, and they make a whole bunch of different kinds of items. And they have over 200 different kinds of handmade items, not to mention Frobo's Meat Locker is definitely a bratwurst paradise. They have over 125 different brands of bratwurst to choose from. Be sure to check them out on Facebook or visit their website. Robosmeatlocker.com. Join us at historic Danny's Cafe, Rossford. We're always serving your favorite food and drinks seven days a week, starting at 11 a.m. Watch the best sports matchups on one of our 50 high-def TVs. Enjoy great live entertainment, trivia, karaoke, and family fun for all ages. Danny's Cafe, Rossford, is now serving breakfast Saturdays and Sundays from 11 a.m. to 1. Check out the Ford Social Club for your private event. 600 Dixie Highway in historic Rossford, across from Rossford High School. And we are back on the Toledo Sports Network. And Eastwood's lead cut to three. Ah, 147 in the third, 31 28. Well, and if you're just joining us, there was a little bit of extracurricular activity, so to speak, from Kenton. That'll mark him back now on the kick. Okay, so this they marked him back for one penalty on the point after and another one on the kick. Yep. So Andre Lewis, Daquan Oliver. With some supporting cast, they're going to try to squib it Another almost one. again. Fair catch by Woodward. Going to be touched a little bit after the play. He did throw his fair catch. He did. You know what? Fair catch. Nothing too dirty on that one from just, either side. Just a little chip. Yeah, just. And yeah, I get it. Your motions are running, but. That was keys to the game. You got to stay cool here. Play the ball that you were playing in the first quarter. Ludhart's in. QB. Oliver to go around him. The HB There's toss. Going to try to get it. He gets caught right there. Oh. That's going to force him back. Come on. I'm afraid of that. Sometimes, sometimes you, you, you think as an athlete, you can athlete, athletic your way out of it. And that's exactly what Daquan tried. He, I think, honestly, it. I mean, you got to appreciate the spirit and you got to appreciate the no quit. It, but they, he, he, he's good at those, admittedly. They just, if you know what's going to happen, it is what it is. But a pass now stays like. Ludhart to throw it over a little bit. The third and 19. Minute and eight, the clock is stopped. You can feel the momentum changing over the Kenton here. Yeah, that's 
Well, the Eagles are just a little bit disjointed. Nothing's quite clicking in line right now. Now this is, oh well. Yeah, Messenger and Oliver coming near side. That's right, I believe Andre Lewis by himself to the left. Just don't try anything fancy here. Just chart to chip at it. A ball thrown up. Oh, Miss, late him. hit. Late. I wonder if they just ran into each other. They just ran into each other. Yeah. I mean, that was Messenger. He went. He went up to try to get. It brings up fourth it, down. It's dangerous. And then he fell, hit the ground, and then the guy yeah. was there. He fell right in front of the guy. Yeah, who just tripped over him. It's dangerous to stop momentum just suddenly. I mean, so it's, it's going to happen. It, fourth and 19. That's going to bring out the punting unit. All right. And now we've got another. Timeout field for an injury. Uh-oh. Injury timeout. That is not good. Well, Coach Turner and the Wildcat football team would like to thank Wilson Football for their donation of footballs and for being the official football of the Kenton Wildcats. Wilson Football. You know where Wilson footballs are made? Louisville? Ada, Ohio. Really? Just down the road a piece. Oh. Yep. If you ever watch the Super Bowl pre-shows of the week leading up, they always have a story. There they go to the, the, the plant to show the I footballs mean, being made for the Super Bowl. Super Bowl, <laughs> it, it kind of feels, I mean, I might be out of pocket here, but it feels kind of like a Super Bowl, you know, just kind of nagging at it at times, the intensity, the pressure. Unfortunately, my team has six of them, so we're It's the doing first well. game of the season. That's, uh, yep, first, uh, first game. Expectations are set in the first two, I think. Maddox Hummel lipping off the field. All He's going to take a breather for a little bit. Okay. But he's up and moving. He's, he's walking. Yep. Gingerly, but he's walking. That's, that's the important thing. A little hard to kick off. St. Perkins needs to receive. Ludhart's kicking the punt. Almost blocked. Gets it off. Good kick. Take a bounce. It will bounce a little. It took an Eastwood bounce to start and then it bounced back. Four, four yards. Four well, yard 53 seconds left. And then when we get into the fourth quarter and we're on defense, you got to play Renegade and get them going. <laughs> I don't think they'll play Renegade well, for you. I mean, uh, it's a long shot, but you never know. Uh, I don't know if they have their own song here or not. But, <laughs> uh, no. Well, yeah, I think you are right, too. I can definitely see it. The mood has changed here on the Kenton side. And I mean, that's just part of football. Eastwood being faithful on their side, though. A lot of faith in Eastwood defense on Daquan Oliver, and he can oh, hang. Oh, for sure. He's a really nice guy, loves to give back to the Pemberville and Lucky community. They're, they're leaving him on an island. Oh, yeah. Daquan Island, oh. or Oliver Island. Yeah. He's earned that trust for sure. Jack sets yeah. him off the bottle, bottom of the pile. Well, I don't think there's going to be anybody that can outrun him. Oh, absolutely not. You got Johnson and Rogel in the backfield for Kenton. Oh, Kenton's kind of just letting this go. There it goes. Rogel. Read option. Nope. East fake the handoff. Johnson the Johnson's got a good fake. Yeah, He's. it was. And it was good of Eastwood to kind of recognize that and just know that kind of just play their job. The and the third quarter is coming to a close here at five seconds. And it looks like we'll just head into the fourth. Yeah, at the end of three, your score, Eastwood 31, Kenton 28. We will be right back on the Toledo Sports Network. For the best meats around and the best price, get to Frobo's Meat Locker on Front Street in Pemberville. Frobo's family features homegrown meats, and they make a whole bunch of different kinds of items. And they have over 200 different kinds of handmade items, not to mention Frobo's Meat Locker is definitely a bratwurst paradise. They have over 125 different brands of bratwurst to choose from. Be sure to check them out on Facebook or visit their website, frobosmeatlocker.com. Great food and great fun. The Keg in Greytown is now open and ready to make your night out fun and full of great surprises. Some of the best food in the area, all made by scratch with hand-cut fries, wings, chunks, Papa's chili, and much, much more. Wood-fired pizza ovens, making some of the best pizzas in the area. Now don't worry, we have the toppings you want, and our dough is made fresh every day. The Kegs. 
1790 North Walker's. Yeah. There it is. Back just in time. Uh oh. There's laundry. False start on. Kenton. Kenton. Feels for a false start against Kenton. A break well needed. We'll the Eagles up. down by three. They can use it. Or up by three. Yeah. They can take any break they'll get. That's for sure. 31 28. Right. Start of the third. We didn't even get to start the clock on the third quarter. Well, back at it again. Going to yep. go. Yep. Find the Pulls gap. Pulls it down. 11 yards from Johnson. They found the gap up the middle. Enough for a Wildcat first down. Yeah. It's not Johnston, it's Vogel. It, they're, keep, they're running, keeping Clinton, it pretty much within Clinton the tackles. Beasley. There he goes. Uh oh. It's Rogel. Alex Rogel, the ball here. Wrapped up by Kevin Lewis. Moves the ball into Eagle territory, second and four. Eastwood defense got quite a few hands on the hips there. Well, Paul rushing to get back on side. That won't hold him against him. We're going to try to run up the middle, and the Lumberjack Lutz and Heiser to make the tackle. Alex Rogan, the ball carrier. Lutz and Heiser. Kevin Lewis after a short game. Third down. They're giving credit to Lewis, but it, Lutz and Heiser had a big... Yeah, that's just how things got to move along right here. Johnston keeps it up the middle. Pushes forward. Johnston ball here. Third. Mm. That's fourth down. It's depending on the spot again. Well. You know, if you're oh, Kenton, they're saying fourth. Play. Yep, fourth down. Gee. Gonna keep the offense out there. Lots and Heiser, you gotta be careful on Johnston. the scrimmage, dude. Johnson, is that right? Johnston's gonna go up the middle. Well, you gotta squeeze it. Two yards. That's all about the field that counts right now. They're not gonna throw deep. They're not going to. Trying to process everything here. An audible thrown. Rogel. Johnston to pass it. Rogel. I think he's short. I, well, I guess I'm wrong. They're giving sometimes. it to him. Well, he barely, he just got it. Overhouse with the stop. It's a first down Wildcats. Less than 10 minutes to go in the game, down by three. First and 10 on the 43. Cleman Beasley comes off the field limping. Uh oh. Johnston gives it to Rogel off the left side. He picks up another good chunk of 12 yards. Tackle by Andre Lewis. It's another first and 10 Wildcats. All righty. Well, I think the fatigue's getting to everybody here. 931, counting. They try to run the ball. Eastwood catches it right there. They're just Kenton. They just keep driving, driving, driving. All from the O line to the to the running back. They're just well, they keep those legs moving. They're driving. Well, that's been working. I mean, I don't yeah, blame you for doing that. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah. Second and six on the 27. 906 and counting. Johnston to now to line up. Four men, no, excuse me, three men on the defensive line. Looks to be zone coverage. Going to be the handoff to Rogel right there. Nope. Going to try faked and fight it. it. No, nope, faked it. And the sack right there, a good break. That was for a tough Eagles. fake for us to see because we're behind oh, yeah, the we're player behind. right now. So that'll be third. Third and six. Third and six. At least that's what their spotter's saying. So. Now, now they put it third and seven. Third and seven. Third and seven. I won't complain about that. On the 28 now. Sure, Coach Cotterman won't either. Johnston to look. Going to have to look. He'll look to his right. 
The slant. Catch made on the slant. Messinger with a shoelace tackle on the catch from Maddox McFarland, the freshman. So that'll be ruled fourth down. Eight and six, 806 and counting. Fourth and one. Now, this is great. Welcome to football. Three feet could determine the rest of this game. Oh, Johnston on a keeper. I'm calling it now. I believe you. <laughs> Just hopefully you read that. To look now. 740. Six. There's six left on the play clock and counting. You got to call a timeout. Nope, yep. They're calling a timeout. So now you only got one to le one left in the game, and yep. that is the timeout right there. So you leave it at 7:34. I think you're running the clock out though, because now well, you give East with. They also time. wanted to give Kleeman more time to to heal. Oh yeah, that too. But not necessarily heal, but to catch his breath. Get, get that ankle loosened up. Look like an ankle. I don't blame you. I mean, he's been a big part of this uh, Kenton offense all night. And if he's if he's available, that gives him another option that ne you don't necessarily rely on Johnston or oh. Rogel for, to run up the middle. If there's a will, there's a way, and he'll find it. So fourth and one. Fourth and one, 734. I apologize. The scoreboard is not keeping time right. I Mike swears we had it going. I didn't need to look at it. I have no idea. We'll get it going for next year. Oh, yeah. First game, first game jitters. We, we blame the technology. No, blame me. I'm an idiot. Better be oh, he tried to push it in. He might have it. stuffed him. And it looks like, no, no, he's not short. He's still oh, going. He's still Put going. him down. Put him down. Oh, How my gosh. How is he still going? The dragon three Eastwood guys with him for another 20 yards. That. Wow. You don't give up. I mean, and that's definitely been observed here. You see it right now. For the first time since the since we really started, they got on the board in their first drive with a touchdown, and then it's been all Eastwood. But they're going to try Johnston. They're pushing the brotherly them. shove. The, uh, the Eagles tush push there. Yeah. <laughs> the Philadelphia Eagles tush push. Well, thank you for the logo. Still a little short. Nine feet now. Three yards separates the oh. Kenton Wildcats from taking the lead with 7.03 left. Another injury. All right. Hoping it's just a cramp. And looks to be that way. I mean. Both teams going to go to the, over to their own side. Oh, Archibald came back on the on Genoa. They're leading 27-14. Are they really? In the fourth quarter. Rossford oh. leading uh, Northwood 21-14. Really? In the fourth. Really? Lake over Lipsick 28-22 in the fourth. That's good. And then, yeah, circling back to Genoa, it's good Mr. Jameson's having some fun out there. He gets to see a cool contest being played. Otsego crushed by Bowling Green, 41-7. That is a final. Really? And Van Buren crushed Fostoria, 38-0. That is a final. Well, second one doesn't really surprise me. The first one, though, wow. The Redmen have had, been having troubles. Well, and that's, you're going to have some rough patches. Uh, they've been having a rough patch for three, four years now. Well, and it's destined to happen with different classes and different athletes, but back to it. Down by three, three yards separate them from the lead, second down. Looks like they'll have a new man at quarterback, Blaine Bushong. He'll get the ball, the fake handoff, run the read option, he'll evade the oh. first guy, not the second. A good tackle, hopefully for lost. Stopped right there by Colton Oberhaus, the offensive Oberhaus. senior, while playing defense now. So third and four. And Johnston's back out. All righty. So it must have been just a one play. It must. He, he probably had. He was probably the. Uh, well. The reason we had the injury timeout. Who knows? So he had to set a play probably. Mm -hmm. And Lo another now injury. Logan Brown. It looks like sitting down. Hoping it's another cramp, but I mean you never want to make assumptions. They are not doing the usual cramp stretch. That's not good.
beautiful day for football. Yeah, it is. I love Friday nights in Northwest Ohio. Football stadium lights are on. It's that time of year again, boys. Good crowd coming down from Pemberville area. And hopefully they can will their Eagles to hold on here. Well, it's going to take some. 6.44. Well, at least here for the for Eastwood, if you stop them here, you can hopefully keep it a tie game. Four yards now. Separate the Kenton Wildcats from getting into the end zone. You're going to have Johnston right back again at quarterback. And Rogel to his right. Yep. Hands off to Rogel up the, the middle. hands off. Not quite. He'll be pretty stagnant on that one. So that'll be fourth, fourth and goal. How far away he is, I'm not quite sure. It's hard to tell from this angle. It looks like the two, two yards. Yeah, fourth and two. And they'll keep the offense on the field. Fourth and goal oh from boy. the two. This is what it comes down to, folks. Two yards separate him from the end zone. Rogel. Hand off right there. Up the middle. He'll get in. Well. Rogel took the handoff from Johnston two yards up the middle for well, another Kenton Wildcat run. touchdown. Give let's, them the lead right now, 34-31, you know waiting the extra point. Let, let's not get too pessimistic here, though. It's still a shot. You got half the quarter remaining. I mean, you just, something you got to work on. But I mean, he's been undefeated and kicking so far today. We'll see if that continues. Bad snap, good recovery though. Yeah, good recovery. Gets it up there. Yep. Right. I gotta fix the scoreboard, I messed up. Uh, 35-31, heading on to offense. There we go, I got it right now. Put the points under the wrong team. I know Eastwood fans would have liked that to be the, the case, but got to get the right score up there. Well, here we go again. I don't know, do you kick it or just, do you? Uh, the, I mean, <laughs> do an outside kick again. You want to give Eastwood as, huh. as much field that they have to conquer as possible. You would think, but I don't know if it's if it's Piper that just can't kick, or if it's a strategy that they've been, well, you know, kicking at five, ten, you know, fifteen to twenty yards. Well, we'll see. I don't know what what their longest kick has been. It hasn't been much more than 20, 25 yards. Yeah, that, that's high school for you. Expect the unexpected. Uh, here we go. There he goes. Yeah. Oh, that was perfect. Unless Woodward is going to have to use his legs here. He'll be taken down around the eight yard line, give or take. Coach called that one. 90 yards. That was Coach five Turner. Minutes. For five minutes and 56 seconds. That was all Coach Turner making the call on where to kick that one. He lulled Eastwood into an up receiving position and then over kicked it over their heads. Well. And he waited till the very last moment to tell his kicker where to kick it. Oh yeah, and Drew Ludhart here, still at quarterback. Andre Lewis, no, he'll keep it scrambling. Is that a direct snap or was that Ludhart? Ludhart got Ludhart. it on a direct snap. The ball's on the nine, so it'll be second and 10, or excuse me, on the 14, second, second and five. five. You got some yardage there. 
Clock running, 5.30 left in the game. Well, and on the positive note, you got three timeouts here. Now's the time to use them. They will not carry over to next week. And the laundry will be thrown there. And it'll be on Kenton. I believe that's false start. However, I mean, I didn't get a good Offsides. look. Offsides. Neutral, zo neutral zone infraction. Would, yeah. Yep. They're going to call neutral zone. I mean, good to have that observation. I'm not going to complain about that. Gives them a first down, too. All right. Eastwood now going to line it up. One to Ludhart's right. He'll have Messenger and Lou, and I believe Oliver, or yep and Oliver and Messinger to his left. We'll have Kevin Lewis behind him and we'll have Andre Lewis, his brother, on to the right. A handoff right Hand there. Handoff to Lewis. He will get some yardage. He'll he get a he second. Got five there. I, I don't think it was that much, but he did get something with 453 and counting. Gain of five on the play, second yep. and five. Second and five. And second and five here, gonna move it along with it. On the 24, fourth and 40 right here. Ludhart gonna roll to his right, the throw to Lewis, and he gets it. I'm telling you, he got that. Nope, nope. It skipped up into his arms. He fell, he fell making his turn. If he would have kept his feet, he probably could have came back to get to that. But he slipped and fell and it skipped right, on, right in front of him. 435 flat on the clock. Same situation, you need five yards here to keep your game alive. Now here we go once more. Oliver in motion coming near side. Yep, Oliver, Messinger, and Lewis, the same ones. Kevin right by Ludhart. Ludhart to roll right again to Lewis. Yeah. Gonna try to go long. He's got him free. He oh. No, he does Just not have that. Lewis is Just overthrew him slightly. Fourth and five, you and gotta go for it fourth here. Down. Fourth and 29 now to keep it away. Uh, you got they're going to have to go for it here. I don't know. And you don't know because well, you're, you're, your punter is your quarterback. It's not guaranteed if you're going to get the ball back right. If you're going to get the ball back in the game. I mean, obviously, Fourth and five. coaches know more than I do, though. And that's probably. Ludhart's back in punt position. Thing. All righty. Timeout. And Eastwood's and burning a timeout. Now two to go for us. So 429 left in the game. Kenton 35, Eastwood 31. We'll be right back on the Toledo Sports Network. For the best meats around and the best price, get to Frobo's Meat Locker on Front Street in Pemberville. Frobo's family features homegrown meats, and they make a whole bunch of different kinds of items. And they have over 200 different kinds of handmade items, not to mention Frobo's Meat Locker is definitely a bratwurst paradise. They have over 125 different brands of bratwurst to choose from. Be sure to check them out on Facebook or visit their website, frobosmeatlocker.com. We are back live at Robinson Field, Kenton, Ohio. Fourth and five for Eastwood. They're going for it. And the ball will roll. He's got him. And it's caught by Andre Lewis. He'll get up center. So a first down right there. Keep it rolling. 425, or excuse me, 427. First and 10. Ball's on the 41. So you got to go... I, if I'm not mistaken, you got to go 59 yards to the end zone here. Okay. Here we go now. Drew Ludhart going to line up at quarterback Kevin Lewis behind him. Andre on his own over to Ludhart's right. Oliver and Messinger, that wide receiver group, up to the left. Hand the ball off to Kevin Lewis. He'll find it on the left a little bit. He'll get a couple, 
So I believe that'll be a second and eight right there. 3.55 and counting. Two timeouts remain for Eastwood, only one for Kent. And looks to be a substitution made, I believe, right here. Messenger will come out. Or no, he'll go over to the right. So now it's Lewis by himself on the left. And now Ludhart gonna have to go out to the right. Gonna have to look for the ball. He'll get it to Oliver. They're arguing it was past the line of scrimmage. I, I didn't see that personally. So that should be a first down for Eastwood. It is, first down. I mean. 35, 31. That's good, I mean. First, first game I ever worked was kind of a similar situation to this. Got it, it was 16 seconds left. I mean, it's not over till it's over, folks. Lewis alone to the right again. Oliver and Messinger right there. Kevin Lewis behind Ludhart. Ludhart to look. He'll throw downfield. Caught by number two in Cam Shoemaker. Shoemaker. That's a first down right there. Tackle by Zane Perkins. Keep it going here, folks. 3.05 and counting. First and 10 ball on the 24 yard line. And one throw of the ball can change the world here, folks. 252 and counting. Eastwood on Kenton's 24 yard line, yeah. first and 10. Oh, interesting. Messinger alone on the left. Gonna leave Oliver, and that'll because Kevin Lewis has to go on the right, gonna try to block him a little bit. We've got a couple, 233 now, and we're gonna keep that going. Second and eight, ball in the 22. And once again, we will have post-game coverage live on Eastwood Sports Network shortly after this one, if you are looking for that. To keep it back on track here though, second and eight, 2.15 to go. 22 yards separate Eastwood from the end zone. The clock's running though, and you got two timeouts. It's not quite time to use them yet. You gotta get in the motion, you can't waste any time. Gotta get set here. Ludhart gonna look. He'll get oh. it, try to throw it to Kevin Lewis. And a late hit by number 28 right there. Kevin Lewis looking for some laundry. The ref not gonna do anything. No. Nope. And I mean, it's subjective on that. Third down. Third and eight. It could have, could have been a defensive player hit there. It could have been, didn't <laughs> quite stop the breaks in time and that just happens. 20 seconds left on the play, cock, play clock. Ah. Minute 55, flat. Third and eight, Ludhart to get the ball low. Hill will throw, back to the off. end zone. Shoemaker, oh. on the, it, he was, I'm was telling you, hit. it was hit late. He was hit late. No. He was hit when they caught the ball. Uh, and he's down now. He's and down, he's cramping. It's been getting chippy all day, you can't let that happen. So now you deal with a fourth and eight on the 22. It was a good hard play. He went up to get the pass. He got his hands on it, and then he got hit. Well, and One fifty left in this fourth quarter. Fourth and eight from the 22 oh. of Kenton. 35-31, Kenton with the four point lead. This is Eastwood's last chance here. Mm -hmm. Yep, minute 50. They got to get it to the 15, yeah, the 15 yard line. Past the 15 yard line. Yep, eight yards here, folks. It, don't even get to the end zone. If you get those eight yards, that's cool. You got to do it, get it here to now. The 15. Come on, boys, let's go. Roll Eagles, Messenger, 14. and Oliver on to the left. You got, you got Lewis right on the right. Ludhart to snap. Gonna look at the ball now, gonna look for it. Whistle blown. Time out, Kenton, before the snap. That is quite the ice before right the there snap, if I've ever seen out, one. Kenton. Wow, uh, that's their last time out. Well, that might come back to haunt them, but you know what? 
I don't know. We'll never know how that play happened, how it would have gone. It could shake. Well, Eastwood up too, though. Third, I don't know. Third key of the game. You or stay coach, cool in this pressure. Or Cotterman saw something he didn't like. Or uh, Turner saw something he didn't like well, in the in the lineup in the scheme. And he called the timeout to fix it. You, know, you don't know. You or he's play, or he did it to play mind games. Oh yeah, stay cool under pressure. You know, now. you you had the timeout to take. And you got two. And you got two. You've got the four-point lead. The, the, the field goal does, does Eastwood no good. They've got to score the touchdown. All righty. Well, okay, folks, here we go. we got Messenger coming this side. Yep, Messenger and Oliver. Oliver coming this side. Yep. Fourth and eight. Ball in the 22. Got to get to the 15 here. Everybody on their feet. Lute Hart looking now. You got Lewis to your right. A block made right there. Lewis to catch. He will get there in time. Lewis gets the, the first, first down. down. He will get out of bounds, which it, stops the clock at a minute 41. First and goal now, if I am not mistaken. Uh, I think he's still outside the 10. I mean, that'll give you some leeway it's, if you need The be. ball spotted at the 12. Okay. First and 10 from the 12. Eastwood down four, 35-31. That's good. East 135 left in the game. The Eastwood faithful on their feet now. Definitely something we needed I'm, to see. I'm surprised they're not all running down to be at that end. Oh, they? yeah. Messenger now all alone. Hand Lewis off. To, Lewis to run. He will find Kevin it. Lewis. Kevin Lewis. That's right. Good observation. You know, you got. That's the time to use the track boys right there. They know how to run. And now you see what can happen. Lewis picked up eight, seven or eight on second that. Second and three. Second down and three. Picked up seven on that, second and three. Seven. Eastwood still has two timeouts on the board, too. Yep, seven and three. And the clock's running, 57 seconds and running. Yep, 55 count, and that is correct. Ludhart to get ready now. Messenger looking. We got the Lewis going to be wide on left. Kevin Lewis, on the other hand, going to be right next to Ludhart. Oh. Ball dropped and fumbled, but a flag is thrown. Uh, that's going to be... I think that's going to be motion. False start on uh, Eastwood. Well, it, you never know. You never know. Indication, false start against yep. Eastwood. That's oh going to back him up five yards. It's going to make it seven and eight. That. Second and eight. Yeah. Not the end of the world, but not ideal either. More importantly, it pushes him out to the 10 yard line. Mm -hmm. Second and eight. All righty. Here we go, folks. 32 and counting. Here we go. Coming now, we will get ready to go. ludhart has got no. Somebody got, I think. Eastwood oh, just called call. a timeout. Timeout. <laughs> so you got one now. All right, let's take a break so we can breathe. We'll be right back on the Toledo Sports Network. For the best meats around and the best price, get to Frobo's Meat Locker on Front Street in Pemberville. Frobo's family features homegrown meats, and they make a whole bunch of different kinds of items. And they have over 200 different kinds of handmade items, not to mention Frobo's Meat Locker is definitely a bratwurst paradise. They have over 125 different brands of bratwurst to choose from. Be sure to check them out on Facebook or visit their website. Frobosmeatlocker.com. We, we're back at Robinson Field. Oh, you're running the commercial oh, right there. I'm running the commercial. Let me go back. It's, yeah, it's all righty. Yeah, here we go. Let's try this. A situation now. Oh, I know what I did. Let's try all that. folks. It all comes down to this. Second and eight, balls on the 10. 25.8 seconds remaining. Second and eight. You're gonna have Messenger on the left by himself. Lewis, Andre Lewis on the right. The ball off and off to Kevin Lewis. He's gonna find daylight. He gets a few yards, two, three yards. And clock the, down to 19 seconds, seconds and a timeout third. called by Eastwood. So that's no their more final timeout. Third and eight. Neither team has third, a timeout left. Third and I think, well, no, I think. Yeah, nobody's nope. got a timeout. Nobody's got a timeout left. Third and I believe that'll be third and third and five, third, third and four. four. I thought it was third and four. Trying to see where the five. ball is spotted. A cramp right there, not the time for it. They haven't put the ball down, so I don't know where they're spotting it. Uh, 
These are the times when you wish you could talk to an official. Oh yeah. To find out if there if it's an injury timeout or if it's the timeout yeah. for. Should get them mic'd Eastwood up. called it. Get them mic'd up. See what's going on. Third and five, 19 seconds. Seven yards is all Eastwood needs here in the fourth quarter. 35 to 31 is the score. Third and five, seven yard line. Well, a field goal here is no bueno. You cannot get a field goal now. It is end zone or nothing. Well, that's Lewis. Well, he's got to sit out though. Oh dear. You if the, if the timeout was due to injury, if they took the timeout, he doesn't have to sit. Yeah. Cotterman if on the, the timeout stands, he doesn't have to sit. Well, Coach Cotterman on the field trying to figure out what's going on. And this is what every kid in their if front yard was, dreams of. If it wasn't an injury timeout. Here we go. Here we go now. All right, Oliver. Oliver going to go to the left. So will Shoemaker. Ludhart going to be right there flat. Lewis, Oliver moves back over to the right. Lewis, Lewis and Messenger on to the right. Shoemaker. Oliver going to figure out where to go. And the flag right there. Motion. Eastwood's been their own worst enemy in this drive. Tell me about it. Well. <laughs> All right, come on. Eastwood, here we go. Play clock's running. It's down to 20 seconds. Yeah. All right, here we go. There was a lot of confusion that time Once as Eastwood more. was setting up. Lewis all the way to the left. Everybody on Both the right Lewis. side. Ludhart gets Lewis and the. Uh, yep, the Lewis brothers. Ludhart to throw. Tipped. It's tipped. No. That's all right. That's only third down. That was only third. Okay. It goes that. to fourth down. 10, 15 seconds left. One play for, for Eastwood. Well, sorry about your ears there, but. 15.2 seconds on the clock. Well, here we go. 35 31, Kenton on top. 10 yards needed here. Ludhart. 15 seconds to get ready now. Messenger mm. on the left, Shoemaker as well. You got Oliver and Andre. Low snap, he gets Lewis it. Off. To Touchdown! East Wood Eagles! Here we go. Is that Andre? Yes, sir, that is Andre, Andre Lewis. Lewis. With the snap, a beautiful play just right there. inside the end zone. He just 9.7 seconds left on the clock. Now, Eastwood takes the lead, 37-35. Apologies to the listeners at home if I busted your eardrums. You know how kids dream of winning a line drive right there? Young broadcasters dream of calling a game-winning game -winning touchdown. Thirty-seven, thirty-five, injury timeout. And there's 9.7 seconds to go. They're having a defensive talk down in the coach's area there. Oh boy. 37, 35. Well. Here's our score. Extra point here gets you the field goal. Do your job here, folks. And I'll tell you, Andre Lewis will get free IGA for the rest of the week. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that, Ben. That, that was Dan. Well, I'll, <laughs> I'll pay for it and give it to him. <laughs> I don't know. If I wasn't going to be on the other side of town tomorrow, I might have gone and get some brats. But right. Watching that commercial is making me hungry. Yeah, we're all hungry yeah. here. Nothing better than a Frobos brat. Mm -hmm. Ben knows his stuff when it comes to brats, that's for sure. All righty. And we'd like to thank him for sponsoring us. He, we would. Ben, ben yep. Frobos, Frobos Meat Locker makes it possible for us to bring these games to you live each and every Friday night. And we will be following the Eagles all season long here on Toledo Sports Network. And Mike and I are going to fight it out for the last game of the season on who gets to do it. <laughs> it's, not, it's, it's Genoa Eastwood. We may both do it. We'll just do two broadcasts. I don't know. 
Kick is up. Austin Miller up. It's good. Yes, sir. -y. So just focus here. Now is the time you got to be cool, man. Now is the time. So it makes it 38-35. Well, just if this is pulled off, the bus ride will feel a lot shorter back, I'll tell you. 38-35 Eastwood, 9.7 seconds on the clock. A lot of discussion going on amongst the coaching staff for Eastwood. Do they kick it deep? Do they squib it to start the clock early? What do you, what do, you do? I mean, the clock really doesn't start until somebody touches it. Well, so. I, think, I think you don't overthink it. I mean, you don't want to have it where they can easily return it. But then again, you don't want to give them a lot of yardage. So go for that mid-level kick in about 20, 25? Yeah, because in that range, it's going to be a lot difficult, a lot more difficult to get it all the way down. I don't know what kind of leg we've got. Or try to get it in field goal range and force overtime. Oh, boy. I mean, I love being here, but overtime with an hour and a half bus ride, boy, that'd be something else. Anyways. <clears throat> Back into the swing of things. Here we go. Eastwood to kick. Squib kick right down the middle. Yep. Oh. We're going to try to throw ladder. Woody to stay. It's the Tennessee watch. Titans. Yep. 2.8 seconds. He gets Take out of bounds out. at about the 35 yard line, depending on where they spot it. Looks like so they're gonna... This is going to be like the last play in recess football. You know, you just. Tried to they tried to do the miracle on Nashville Row there. Oh, yeah. So just, well, as long as you don't hit the end zone. 2.8 seconds, up by three. Yep. You got Cleman Beasley's out there. He's been their key. Just got to keep, you got to keep Got to keep him in front of you. Got to keep it in conservative style. You can't be aggressive now. And you can't let him juke you. Play it you. safe, play it cool. Got and him. they got him. Ball and game. just like that, Connor Norton with the tackle. This is a 38 to 35 Eastwood victory. <laughs> boy, that was a, boy, that was a lot of. That was that a nail biter if I'd had any left. Sure. Just in a moment, Eastwood Sports Network will host our post-game show. We're very grateful to have you guys with us. Thank you so much for allowing me to tag along with Toledo Sports Network tonight. Thank you for helping me out, man. Yeah, it's been course. great. So your final score from Robinson Field in Kenton. Kenton Wildcats, 35. Your Eastwood Eagles, 38. For the Toledo Sports Network, I'm Rick. He's Dan. Larry on the camera. Thank you very much, and good night.